Okay, okay, I think we're good. We're live. Happy days. Oh, the eclipse was today. Solar eclipse, pog. I just want to do a couple of administrative things, I suppose you could say. In the meantime, while uh, we're just hanging out here, let me open up my Twitch. Because I actually do, um, I look at the chat through Twitch. I don't look at the chat through um, OBS or a pop out. I'm still kind of figuring out exactly what I want the stream setup to be like for me in terms of like a logistic sense. Where do I want all of my monitors? Where do I want the OBS? Where do I want my gameplay, my current gameplay? That kind of thing. Um, but the thing that I wanted to do now, I forget exactly how to do it, was um, how to do it. Oh God, shut up. Was to add my schedule. This house mix is so good. It's gotten me through like the most boring work possible. <laughs> um, where do I do it? Do I have it on my main channel page or do I, maybe I go to my creator dashboard. That seems right, no? Stream manager, alerts, analytics, community, maybe? No. Uh, content? No. Settings. Streaming tools. No. <laughs> Streaming tools. This is not it. Where do I put the schedule? I did it last week. Where is it? Mm -mm -mm. I don't like it. This is so annoying. Where can I find it? Stream schedule. I'm sorry, I'm saying it like that. <laughs> Manage stream. I, th I swear to God it was on my channel and I could just do it from there. Maybe, oh, here we go. Cause since I'm live, it, um, it defaults to going to the chat page. All right, add schedule. Elden. Or let's say shadow of the Erd tree. Tree, excuse me, I don't know how to type. Cosplay build. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, and then it's an Elden Ring. Okay, and then I said that tomorrow, let me pull up my noties here, my notes. Tomorrow we're gonna go at 4 p.m. Specific day. That's tomorrow. Add another. And then we are going for, let's call it 12.30. 12.30 on um, Wednesday, we're gonna be back here. 12.30, and that is Wednesday, April 10th. Let's add another one to the schedule. Sorry, I'm just trying to get this done beforehand so I can point people in the right direction if they want to know what's coming up. Thursday, we're also going to do a 12.30. And then for the last stream of the week on Friday, Friday, April 12th, we're going to have a later stream. We're going to start that one at 6 p.m. I want to make sure that everyone can watch at some point or another. I know that streaming earlier on the weekdays um, is gonna be pretty difficult for a lot of people to tune in. And we do have the VODs channel. We do have the YouTube videos coming out, but I just wanna make sure that everyone has a chance to watch live if, they, uh, if their schedule conflicts. Because last week I did noon, three, noon, noon, noon which I feel like is pretty egregious if you have a normal job. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, do I have stuff in my teeth? It's gross. Whatever. 
we'll deal with it. Mm-hmm. 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 But yeah, uh, today was the eclipse. That was really fun. I just got back from the park. I went with my family to watch it. Um, it was cool. I felt like I was in Berserk. <laughs> Cringe. Um, but yeah, it was nice. It was nice. They had a food truck and some like park games and stuff like that. And we were just hanging out. Um, doing normal stuff. But it was cool. It was cool. I love that kind of cosmic... I don't know what to call it. Event. It was a nice time. Uh, the next one, I believe, is in 2044, I want to say. 2044. That seems right. When, let's, let's check for sure. Um... Next, Eclipse, August 22nd, 2044. But then we have another one after that in 2045. So we get some pretty close back-to-backs. Interesting. Yeah, so that was today. We did the Eclipse. And then um, yesterday I posted the YouTube video for... The Legendary Joker week. That was pretty fun. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the video. Let's check the analytics here. It's doing decent so far. Um, it's not doing amazing. But it's doing decent. I posted it pretty late at night yesterday. So it didn't really get a ton of traction in the, uh, in the first section. But yeah, we posted the video. I'm pretty happy with the thumb bow to the thumbnail. Here, let's check it out. You guys want to see the thumbnail? Let me know what you think. Here, I can just pull up the raw image, actually, since I have it. <laughs> I, like, cranked the saturation so crazy. Here, let me go over to display capture. I think this is enough, right? <laughs> it's so bad once you start looking at it. <laughs> like, deep in. The picture's so low res. And then I just made all the colors super weird <laughs> but it's doing okay it's doing okay um it's all right so i think the video is actually pretty decent too the only the only thing i'm worried about for the video is about how it's going to be for someone who doesn't play balatro you know what i mean like if you don't play balatro are you even going to understand what's going on i think the middle part where I do like the real life lore and we talk about who the jesters were in real life can appeal to anyone. But I tried to fit like, I edited down the highlights from, let's see, let's count them out. One, two, three, four, like four, two to three hour runs. And the whole video is 35 minutes long. Um, so... It, it's a little much, if you don't know. I tried to cut out pretty much everything that... Like, I trimmed the fat off of the video completely. In the sense where... I only showed, like, what I was picking up on the builds. The cool jokers and my reaction to them. And then the vision for the high score. And then I just showed me getting the high score for the run. And then, like, I'm not monetized on YouTube yet. You need 4,000 watch hours uh, to get monetized there. But I am kind of worried because I put so much... What do I have in my mouth? Uh, because I put so much copywritten music <laughs> in the video <laughs> that I'm like, if I get monetized, am I just going to get my channel like nuked from orbit? <laughs> or at least the video. Oh my god, this chapstick's gross. One second, guys. I'm just going to grab a little towel or something. Okay, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Did you miss me? I hope you were uh, okay. It wasn't too hard for you guys while I was gone. But yeah, we are officially 
transitioning this week into Elden Ring, which I think is going to be pretty exciting. The idea behind it, what I'm doing today and for the rest of this week, and I also, maybe I'll drop a little sneak peek surprise that, I mean, it's not even confirmed yet. I don't want to get anyone excited. Um, if it's not actually going to happen when I say it might happen right now, but I have something exciting planned. <laughs> um, but today is also exciting. <laughs> I don't want to make you think that this one's going to suck. But today we're doing the Elden Ring cosplay build uh, for the new DLC. So I'm sure everyone who is an Elden Ring fan knows that we have a new DLC coming out this June. I'm extremely excited for it. Um, I plan on streaming it excessively, um, playing through it completely. And um, my thing is I want to get into the lore. So we're going to be theory crafting, reading items, farming bosses, getting secrets, stuff like that. But we need to prep for it. We need an appropriate character to actually uh, go on this adventure, right? So today, we are going to start doing that. Did you end up climbing? How was the back tweak? I did not end up climbing. I was like on my back getting a massage. <laughs> Hudson, hi, by the way. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Um, I did not go climbing, unfortunately. Um, and I, I like to keep my nails longer. I like file them to a point and I took my nails off because I thought I was going to go climbing. And then as I kept sitting, I was just editing and sitting there and I was like, dude, my back is rough. <laughs> it is bad. We are not happy boys. Um, so I took a day off and then uh, I went for a walk. I went for like an hour walk, which was nice. I got a little bit of physical activity after the rowing. Um, and then... Yeah, and then today I had like a 45 minute um, strength exercise and I felt pretty solid. I can definitely still feel it if I like move my back a little, you know, in the wrong way. Um, but I think we're healing up pretty nicely. I took some Advil yesterday and it kind of was okay. And then today I didn't take anything and I'm feeling all right. Thank you for asking though. <laughs> I just said it in passing. It's so, it's so nice. You listened. <laughs> uh, how about you? How are you doing? How are you doing? Anything uh, interesting going on? You excited for the, uh, the Elden Ringing? I'm happy to, uh, we don't have an exact plan. I have a presentation that I want to pull up. I usually try and sit here and chat for 15 to 30 minutes. Just, you know, get familiar with everyone, a chance to catch up and do that kind of thing. Um, but then I have a little presentation that we're gonna go into about what to expect this week and kind of my thoughts for the cosplay build, um, which I am pretty excited about, honestly. I have not played Elden Ring in like a year. I don't think I've even booted the game in like a year. Here, let's check Steam. Yeah, last played April 2023. I have not popped it open in a year. Um, so, there's that. I, I hope I still know how to dodge roll. <laughs> um, but today we're going to be watching some videos. Um, we're going to check out the trailer for the DLC. We're going to watch at least some of the highlights of the breakdown. And... We are going to start brainstorming what the um, the build is going to look like. And then we're going to plan out our route for uh, how to pick up the items. Um, it's a solid change of plans. Yeah, sorry, I haven't been by a stream yet, but glad to be here. I'm doing well. Survive the eclipse, no complaints. Lovely, lovely. And you don't have to apologize. It's lovely that you're here. I actually really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I'm trying to stream. What's it called? I'm trying to stream. I just added the schedule up five days a week on the weekdays. Um, here I can, I can list it out. I have it in the presentation, but I'm not going to switch scenes right now. We're doing today started at four tomorrow. 
We're doing four again, 4 p.m. This is Eastern time. We're doing 12.30 Wednesday, as in noon and a half. 12.30 again on Thursday. And then we're going for a 6 p.m. Eastern on Friday. Um, and then everything here is, again, I'm just gonna spam you my links. Feel no pressure to click them. But we have the YouTube channel, we have the VODs channel, and then most importantly, I think, we have the Discord server. That's the real kind of central hub of everything. Um, don't You don't have to click them, I'm just giving you the links in case you want to. <laughs> um, they're all pretty new, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, but that's kind of my idea. We're doing five streams a week uh, between three and six hours each time. And then each week I'm trying to edit down a YouTube video um, about the theme of the week. So if everything goes well, on Monday of this following week, so that would be, let me check the calendar, seven days from now, it'll be the 15th of April. Um, the 15th of April, we would have a video about this week's streams, right? Making the cosplay build, uh, planning it, doing our route, going to get the items, and then hopefully beating the game, or at the very least beating Radon and beating Moog, so we can get access to the DLC. And then I think that this week's streams, um, this character, we're essentially just going to toss him on the back burner, and um, we are going to play him or her when the new DLC comes out. That's the character we're gonna go into it with. I wanna check out what the ideal level is gonna be, what to, um, what to expect, what to prepare for when the DLC comes out. I know that you need to beat Moog, you need to beat Radon, and then you have to go to Mikola's cocoon in Moog's palace uh, to enter the DLC zone. And then I know that there's gonna be attack scaling, so I don't think the level, the actual level of your character is gonna be incredibly impactful. I mean, maybe you can be under-leveled, but I think if you're over-leveled, you still have to level up this new kind of stat, this new attack scaling thing. You know what I mean? So I'd like to check that out. I don't know if there's any information yet about what the ideal level to go in as, to go into the DLC is. But I like the challenge of it. I definitely don't want to be too leveled that it's going to be a baby game um, because that that's the benefit and the downside of Elden Ring is that it's very easy to just go somewhere else and just level forever <laughs> you know what I mean um, you can kind of just go level until the bosses are easy now and I do not want that to happen um, I'd like to actually have the challenge of it. I think that's the draw of the Souls-like games. Or Souls games in general, actually. Um, and then the thing that I was teasing before, the very special, exciting plan that I have. <laughs> um, and again, I have not played Elden Ring in a year. I am by no means an Elden Ring speedrunner. So it's mostly gonna be a casual playthrough but I think this week after next, starting on the 15th of April, we are going to try and do something. And again, this is a tentative date. I don't wanna make any promises. Um, I want to do a stream that is essentially, the stream turns off when I beat Elden Ring. So, I'm probably going to be sleeping on the couch back here, uh, take you around, cook my meals <laughs> on stream, and I imagine it's at least going to take me a few days. I think if I'm just playing casual, I'm not doing the speedrun strats or anything, um, it's probably going to take me at least, I don't know, 40 hours of gameplay to beat the game. So I'm imagining... Um, I'm imagining that we're going to be here for a while. Brilliant. That's going to be fun to catch. One second. Let me pull up the chat. Bigger. I got bad eyes. 
That's gonna be fun to catch. It reminds me more of a novella journal playthrough where instead of the video recap, you do a written piece of the character perspective and role play the character um, with my same ideas and perspectives. That's kind of the idea for um, this week's stream is, uh, yeah. <laughs> We're just trying to get really into the lore. That's kind of the same approach that I had with the Balatro. And I wanna, everyone says, when you're starting a Twitch stream or you're starting a uh, YouTube channel or just making content in general, that it's a nice idea to try and niche down. You know what I mean? Find something that uh, makes you stand out and that makes you different. Um, and my kind of thing is that I like to play video games, obviously. Um, I like to do some sort of strategic problem solving. I wanna try and find a good strategy and you know what I mean? Make a plan. Um, and then I also love the lore. And then, like, the real life um, references. You know what I mean? Or just references in general. <laughs> You'll beat the last enemy, exit stage right, pull the plug on stream. I think that's kind of the idea. Um, <laughs> I think that's kind of the idea um, for the big ol' stream on um, next week. So <laughs> I imagine we'll do a sign off and maybe we'll come back and do the stream ends when I beat Melania or something. I don't know. Um, depending on how it goes, it's all tentative. Um, but next week is pretty clear for me schedule wise. So I think I have a good opportunity to try and do that. And then I think that would make a great YouTube video. Pretty easy title thumbnail. The video ends when I beat Elden Ring or I played Elden Ring for a hundred hours straight. It was a terrible idea. And then it's like me sitting there, you know what I mean? All withered. Um, but rigor mortis, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, but yeah, I think it'll be exciting. I think it'll be cool. It's almost like, um, subathon vibes right where you're kind of gonna be with me 24 7 um and then i imagine i'd sleep here and you know i have to cook my meals and i work out every day so i'll probably take you guys along for that too i've been looking at ways to uh set my phone up so i can stream from my phone through obs if that makes sense like i'm streaming off my desktop right now um, and then I can set up basically a zoom call to my phone. So my phone can be the thing here and then I can take you to the gym and stuff like that. 24 seven, pretty much. I imagine I'd leave you outside when I'm taking a shit and showering. <laughs> but other than that, 24 seven. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a doozy, but I think it'll be cool. I think it'll be interesting. And then the other thing that could be cool too, at, from a growth perspective, for me at least, um, the cool part about it for, for me, right, is the growth perspective. Um, and I think it'd be a fun challenge, but if I'm live 24 seven, I feel like it's much more likely that I'll actually get like a big raid or something, you know what I mean? If a streamer that I know or someone's looking to raid someone and they see me playing Elden Ring and I'm, you know what I mean, a hundred hours deep or something, the stream's been on forever. I feel like that's a good, um, good target. And I usually stream from noon to like six or noon to four. Um, so I think that that'll allow me to appeal to more people. I was just saying that this week I'm switching up the timings a little for the streams because I want more people to, to, to be able to tune in. And I mean, what better way to get everyone to tune in or to be able to tune in than be live 24 <laughs> seven. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Um, so that's the idea behind it at least. I don't know, I don't know. But today we're gonna be live for probably about six hours. Um, so we're gonna end somewhere between 9 p.m. and midnight Eastern. Um, and I think that that is gonna be broken up with the beginning part of the stream being more research focused 
You know what I mean? Um, I don't know if you've ever if you've ever watched Bati Vidya. Uh, he's an Elden Ring lore um, YouTuber, I suppose, and he makes great videos. Um, so we're gonna do a little bit of React Andy content. We're gonna watch some of those videos. Um, that might be relevant to the new DLC. I don't think it'll be too too long um, Because there are only a handful of videos that he's put out that are relevant um, And then after that We're gonna start brainstorming the build um, and saying like oh I want to kind of be like this guy or we have to use the dragon communion spells or I want to be a clean rot knight or sleep build for Saint Trina because it's Mikola or I don't know something something um, and then after that oops and then after that we're gonna head over to the wiki uh, the Elden Ring wiki and we're going to find the locations for the items that we're going for and then make a quick route essentially um, just to know where everything that we need is um, and to see what areas we're going to be going to first um, and what bosses, what optional bosses we have to beat for drops and XYZ, all that type of stuff. Um, and then after we do that, which I think should probably take two hours at most, a couple hours, um, then we're going to get into the actual gameplay of it today. I'd love to finish this challenge by Friday, um, I think depending on how it's going, how the progress is coming, we can uh, pick up the pace or grind out some longer streams. If you know four hours a day is not enough for me to get there, um, get the build complete and beat at least Moog and Radon, then uh, we can start doing some long streams. Maybe we'll pick up like I think we could probably do like a 10 hour stream or a 12 hour stream on Thursday or Friday, depending on how everything's going. Worst case. Um, that's when I'm most free. But yeah, and then I think we want to, uh, I'm thinking that I probably want to be a Newman. I don't know how familiar you are with the Elden Ring lore, um, but the Newmans uh, seem to be lore relevant. They're like otherworldly creatures. Um, and it's theorized that the other world that they come from may be the Shadowlands, um, which is where the DLC takes place. Um, and honestly, I think that we've been cooking it up here for long enough. It's about to be 430, 429. Um, so why don't we get to the meat and potatoes of the stream. Let us swap over to the presentation aspect of things. Let's see, let's see. Um, okay, so how do I wanna do this? I think we got to as sad it, as it is. I think we have to swap over the music. Let's put on some like Elden Ring music. Oop, I knocked over my chapstick. Excuse you, sir, good sir. Oh, this is a good song. Elden Ring. Oh, this song's so good, man. Elden Ring, um, Radagon's theme. Want you to see all of the lights. It's a great mix. Sorry. <laughs> it's a vibe change for sure. <laughs> All right, where's my thing, you and Bob? Excuse me. Hello! I'm sorry. Alright, here she is. <laughs> Creative. 
Uh, that's one way to put it. Um, I was gonna work on the lore just to organize and start cooking. I'm very open to suggestions. <laughs> Let's go! Shadow of the Earth Tree! Okay, so this week we are going to do a cosplay build. Cosplay build! So, there's a lot of stuff to do in Elden Ring, and we are going to check out the trailers and stuff like that to see what specifically we can do for uh, Shadow of the Erd Tree to get ready for that. We are going to watch some Vati Vidya videos <laughs> to get some inspiration for what we can kind of cook up for a cool build. Whether we want to go Dragon Communion, Faith, Strength, Clean Rot decks, we can go St. Trina Sleep Build, we can try and do a ranged build or something for like sleep arrows or sleep darts. It could be really interesting. Um, there's a lot of imagery with um, shadow stuff. So the death bird, like the rancor calls could be interesting to cook up. We can go for um, flame. I know that Mesmer the Impaler uh, is very flame focused. So two of the ideas, yeah, that I have here are Mesmer the Impaler who is heavily featured in the Shadow of the Erd Tree trailer that recently came out. Um, and then I think there's something here cooking with the Clean Rot Knight. You can kind of see that they almost have a similar vibe. Um, Trina slash Go Fundamentalist. That sounds really cool. G.O. <laughs> I don't know what G.O. is, but Trina, I'm really interested in. I don't think that that... I've played a lot of Elden Ring. I've done a lot of different runs. Um, Golden Order, I guess that's probably what GO stands for. Um, but I've done a lot of different runs and that is not one that I have cooked up. I've spent a lot of larval tears and that's one that I haven't looked at. So it might be interesting to go for that. But yeah, this first one, oh God, go back. This first one is involving Mesmer and the Clean Rot Knights. So we'd probably use a halberd or a spear and go dex. And then if we can cook up some dex faith with the dragon communion spells uh, for the snakes that he has and the, um, the fire holy spells or incantations, I suppose I should say. Um, I think that that would be really interesting. That's one route we can go down. And then the next one, yeah, is this Mikola saint trina vibe and those are kind of the two things that i am cooking up at the moment that is what i'm looking towards that is what i'm looking forward to um but who knows maybe when we watch the videos we will find something that is a lot more interesting that no one has really thought of yet um so our stream schedule is going to be monday 4 p.m. Eastern. That's today. We're going to do Tuesday, 4 p.m. Eastern. Wednesday, noon Eastern. Thursday, noon Eastern. And then Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern. And that's about the size of it. That is about the size of it. So without further ado, let's get cooking. I think a good place to start is first to turn down this music <laughs> and then to catch up on the chat messages. I think that's going to be an important step for me. <laughs> Let's see. What'd you say? Trina Golden Order Fundamentalist. Same. All my life. Don't let me interrupt your Mikola and Trina have... Uh, don't let me interrupt you. Mikola and Trina have fascinated me for six months. I think it's a really cool thing. I think it's a really cool thing. Um, the only thing that I'm kind of concerned about for that build is I'd want to mix Mikola and St. Trina, right? And what is the Mikola side of things? I don't personally know too much about Mikola doing the fighting thing, the fighting style. I just know that 
He's a little boy. <laughs> He's a little precious baby boy. Um, and is theorized to be St. Trina. Uh, moonlighting as St. Trina. Um, but maybe we go for kind of a Halig tree thing. There could be something there with the Halig tree kind of deal. Um, so that's definitely something we can look towards, look into to try and find out. Um, but I'm, I'm on the same page as you. I think that that is going to be an interesting thread to pull. Okie dokie. So now let's pull up Vati Vidya. And then let's make sure that everything else is out of the way. Oh man, the, the YouTube video I posted last night is picking up. It's doing pretty well. Right now, at least. It's number two out of the last ten that I've posted. So, the only video um, that's outperforming it is the one I posted a month or so ago about Pal World that ended up getting like 13k. So hopefully we can get, if we can get like 3k on this video, I'd be pretty happy uh, considering the amount of work I put into it. It was not as much as I've put into my previous videos and I still thought the quality came out pretty good. It's all about the thumbnail, the thumbo. Okay. How many watch hours does it have? Sorry, I'm so distracted. This is ADHD at work. All right, we have about five hours of watch time in really the first seven hours-ish because the first eight hours was overnight, so no one really watched. That's pretty good for me. Um, I was maybe going to go int faith and do the death flame fundamentalist incantations until Landell, then swap over to Trina. Can you link the socials? My chat didn't populate. I can absolutely link the socials. And I think that that, that, that sounds wonderful. Um, I think that YouTube. Oh, God, I typed it wrong. YouTube. I think one thing that I forgot to mention in the presentation was. Where'd I put that rag? I need to wipe my mouth. I don't know why I'm like this. I always get this like dead skin buildup. Where'd I put that thing? Put that thing back where it came from. Or so help me. So help me. And cut. Am I losing it? Hello? He hello? Anyone? Have you seen a black rag around here? I think you're kidding me. Am I sitting on it? It's on my shoulder. <laughs> Don't clip it. <laughs> Don't tell. No one saw. No one saw. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> oh Christ. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's check out the Vati Vidya YouTube channel. Okie dokie. Videos. And I think we're going to want to go latest. Okay, so I think this is going to be a relevant one for us to watch. How to prepare for Elden Ring's DLC, because that's what we're doing. The lore of Elden Ring is cursed. This one's an hour long. I don't know if we're going to have time. We could pop in just to see the highlights there. I think that Secrets in Shadow of the Erd Tree is going to be interesting here. The Dragons is too long. Too long. I want to look at the lore of Melania. No, we want the lore of Mikola is going to be important. We're going to want... And I think we're kind of cooked here if we're going this far back. Secrets, Eternal Cities, I don't think is necessarily too relevant. Um... Prepare to cry. These ones are so good. I think we're okay here. All right. 
let us <laughs> this is great i'm glad you're enjoying <laughs> let us watch the trailer i think is the first thing first bird tree trailer what japanese subtitles i want 4k original official but i think i just want the actual video oh excuse me excuse me don't start yet wait for my full screen okay here let's see Mike I hope you don't I don't blow your ears out Peggy 16 I think this is appropriate so this we know is gonna be the entrance Pure and radiant he wields love to shrive clean the hearts of men okay that's Mikola there is nothing more terrifying Oh, it's so hype, dude. This game's so good. I'm so ready. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm sorry. I meant to start my timer, but the numpad sent it back. Terrifying. That's me, Pog! <laughs> okay. In that forsaken place. Blood Saint Trina. Blood of your fellows. Wait, doesn't this kind of look like um academy stuff? Doesn't this look magic-y? Academy like? They are true. Alexander, no! They were never saints. They just happened to be on the Oh, this fire boss fire. looks lit, dude. Fire Giant 2.0? Oh, that's Death Blight. That's Death Blight, bro. Not the Death Blight. Mother. Mesmer! Wouldst thou truly Lord That's Dragon Communion. But it's also Flame Incantation. Of light. <laughs> it's so hype. Those weapons look sick, dude. I kind of want to do a ranged build. Bonk. I presume you, too, are keen to know. Machine gun! Just what kind of Mikola is doing here. Oh. I want to try and do some crucible magic too. Of the race of God That's so freaky. So excited. <laughs> oh, Mikola? Oh, I got chills. I got chills. June 21st, 2024. I gotta get the thing, man. I gotta look at it. I gotta get this, dude. The pre order. When can I pre order? It's already available, I bet, right? Oh. Maybe we should switch over to uh, Elden Ring category. Even though it's a bit misleading, we're not actually playing. Yeah, that's fine. Mother, wouldst thou truly Lord Sibshank say? <laughs> Never mind. I went for it. We didn't get it. Bereft of light. <laughs> I'm not Mesmer. 
I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I think that this one is probably better to start with. So much lore. All right. So the gameplay trailer. Let's check it out. Got to put it on head on repeat for a week with the headphones. Worked for me. <laughs> true, true. Good idea. Okay, so what are the chapters here? The new trailer, new gameplay details, the poem, the land of shadow, a land purged, Mesmer the Impaler, kind Mikola, new display design. I don't know if that's going to be relevant to the build. Final observations. For the Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC just dropped, and it's also extremely story heavy, <gasps> pure and radiant. Oh, wait, he here. Love to sorry, sorry. Let me just move my um my camera up so you guys can see the subtitles because that would trigger me if I were you. Webcam is unlocked. We just we'll just put it up here, and again, please here. I'll link it. Um. I don't think I'm going to be taking away too much <laughs> too much viewership from Vati here, but if you have not checked him out, it's a lovely channel. Would recommend. So there's a link if you want to go drop a, a follow or a subscribe, I suppose. Story heavy. Pure and radiant. He wields love to shrive clean the hearts of men. And this is very much the story of Mikola. Let's learn what we can. Dude, I love Mikola. There is nothing more terrifying. You'll recognize Mikola's cocoon here. It's located in Mogwin Palace, and that is the DLC access point that will give way to this. Okay, so just to take some notes here, here are some potential threads. I've watched this once or five times, so maybe we'll skip around to the relevant parts. But we want, we have Mikola, right? And we have Moog. That's right, it's M O H G. Mog. <laughs> I'll watch it six. We got plenty of reacting to do today. So these are kind of two threads that we can draw on. And then let's continue to add to it, and uh, we can add some more specifics later on as um, as we collect more relevant topics. What they're calling the Land of Shadow, a place that you can explore on June 21st as long as you've defeated Moog and Radan. According to Miyazaki, the DLC is at least the same size as Limgrave in the base okay. game. And this so we got Radan too. DLC to date. In that forsaken place. Radan is relevant. Blood must spill. Blood of your fellows. They are truly faithful. Interviews also reveal that there will be eight new weapon categories, and at least I'm so psyched for that. They will never sink. They just happen. This I'm re this boss is gonna be dope. I love the and big bosses like this. The vestiges of a war that occurred in the land of <laughs> what Shadow the fuck? long ago. They've just been obscured by the Erd Tree until now. So many feature designs that would be considered cursed or blasphemous in the lands between. And there's no better example of that than the newest member of Marika's family, Mesmer. Mesmer! Mother, wouldst thou truly lordship sanction anyone so bereft of life? We're entering the DLC as a okay. tarnished yeah. that was sanctioned to become Elden Lord. But it seems events in the base game might pale in comparison to what's playing out here with Mikola, who arrived long before we did. I presume you, too, are keen to know. Just what Dude, I think that this is actually sneaky amazing. This machine gun crossbow is going to make so many people's wet dreams come true of the Berserk cosplay. We did. People finally get a good crossbow like this. For the Berserk, the Guts build. So let's talk about everything. I have analyzed every frame, 
translated every interview and kind of haven't slept in two days. <laughs> so good night and I hope you enjoy. Vati the goat. Of the race of gold shall all meet death in the race of restless flame. Come now, touch the withered arm and travel to the realm of shadow. I will not be far behind. May we meet again. Before we break down the story, I'm going to highlight what I think are three of the biggest gameplay details that I found hidden in some translated interviews. Mm. First, Elden Ring's DLC will actually feature a new power scaling feature that will come into play while you're in the Land of Shadow. Here, our character will be able to upgrade their attack power in a way that is separate from your rune level. Let me explain that. So. Miyazaki mentions that this system is somewhat similar to how attack power works in Sekiro. In Sekiro, you don't level attributes to do more damage like you would do in Elden Ring. Instead, your attack power can be raised by defeating certain bosses and claiming their memories. So a system like this is being added to Elden Ring, and it will be a new way to get stronger in the DLC in addition to using runes to level up, as you're used to. The reason this is being added is because From Software know that there are a lot of players who will be going into the DLC at high levels with mm -hmm. their completed characters. And so instead of having players with completed characters just steamrolling the content, they want players to have that classic experience of struggling against bosses and That's huge. to explore other areas to get stronger to try again. I'm very so, happy about that. By adding a new attack power resource, and hopefully also by scaling our characters appropriately, All right. I think this idea could be genius. Let's hit the lore section. But that's enough about gameplay for now. Let's talk lore. I agree. Shortly after the DLC trailer released, I received an email from Namco Bandai about it, and they included this short poem. It reads, The Land of Shadow a place obscured by the herb tree, where the goddess Marika first set foot, a land purged in an unsung battle, set ablaze by Mesmer's flame. It was to this land that Mikola departed, divesting himself of his flesh, his strength, his lineage, of all things golden. And now Mikola awaits the return of his promised lord. Let's break that down, starting with the Land of Shadow. Mm -hmm, According mm -hmm. to interviews with Miyazaki, the Land of Shadow is a place that has become physically disconnected from the Lands Between. So this isn't an alternate version of the Lands Between, nor does it seem like we'll be going backwards or forwards in time to access the DLC for once. And that is refreshing compared to interesting from software DLCs. I am excited for a DLC that will expand on the present world for once, rather than a past or future world. That said, if anything, the Land of Shadow will definitely contain many remnants of the past, as it is a place obscured by the Ur Tree, where the goddess Marika first set foot. If this place can be obscured simply because the Ur Tree exists, then I lean towards thinking that this might have always been some sort of shadowy dimension, rather than once physically being a part of the lands between landmass. Although there is a nicely sized gap <laughs> right in the middle of the lands between where this might fit. Right next to the Erd Tree. But I think the Erd Tree does generate a ton of light, so the idea of a land of shadow being obscured. Do we know where Mogwin Palace is? between landmass, although there is a nicely sized gap right in the middle of the land. Right, because doesn't it enter from Mogwin? Isn't it like over here? You end I remember you enter from the mountaintop of the giants, you take the portal, but I forget where it actually is. Interesting. Underneath Kaled. Okay, so it's pretty far away. 
<laughs> I wonder how you get in the... If this is where it's at. I mean, this seems ripe for <laughs> the DLC location, right? That is crazy that there's just a cloud there. ...between where this might fit. Uh, but I think the Erd Tree does generate a ton of light, so the idea of a land of shadow being obscured by the Erd Tree kind of makes a lot of sense. I love these drapes. As for why right? this place became obscured by the Erd Tree, I think we can... <laughs> Below Melania, the whole time she fought Radon. America, <laughs> since the age oh, of the Erd God. Tree is her age, after all, and this age only came about when she ascended to godhood and became the vessel of the Elden Ring. The biggest part that's always been missing from Marika's story is what happened before she became a god. And the shadow of the Erd Tree seems to hide the answers to that exact question, since the poem calls the land of shadow the place where the goddess Marika first set foot. Marika setting foot in this place hmm. before setting foot in the lands between makes a lot of sense because we've always known that Marika isn't from the lands between. She's a part of the Newman race and the Newman are said ah. to have come from outside the lands between. The character creator calls the Newman supposed descendants of denizens of another world. So either this other world is the land of shadow and Marika originates from there, or Marika comes from somewhere outside the lands between and outside the land of shadow, but simply set foot in the land of shadow before venturing to the lands between. Either interpretation could be true at this point, I think. At any rate, it seems like the land of shadows is extremely important to Marika's past. Miyazaki drops a huge detail on that note, stating that the land of shadows is the place where Marika became a god and the golden tree was born i can't wait for the dlc to elaborate yeah what does that even mean when marika did claim the elden ring her most significant act was removing the rune of death from it <laughs> afterwards many previous cultures of death were rendered obsolete as souls were now supposed <laughs> to return to the Erd tree so oh i would love to have a to death build if i can tree, they were presumably reborn where were souls going before that now this is just speculation but is it possible souls once went to the land of shadow could the land of shadow once have been a sort of afterlife as evidence for this claim consider that a Mikola only managed to depart to the land of shadow when he divested himself of his grace and his flesh so his death led to him being here. Ooh. Next, maybe we rock the Malaketh sword. That those stripped of the grace of gold shall all meet death in the embrace of Mesmer's flame. So those who are stripped of the grace of gold have to meet death in this place. And the last bit of evidence for this speculation is that there already is a shadowy realm of death. Helfen Steeple in Elden Ring lore called the Helfen. So, since we know that the Erd Tree disrupted the previous cycles of death in the Lands Between, it definitely makes sense to me that the Erd Tree might obscure the Land of Shadow beyond just being a bright source of light. It might have replaced its existence as a sort of afterlife, but I could definitely be wrong on the afterlife stuff, so let me know what you think. At that guy's rate, design is so cool. The Land of Shadow has now become relevant again for... The tarnished have found a way to enter this forsaken place. The poem goes on to read, A land purged in an unsung battle, set ablaze by Mesmer's flame. I interpret this as the land was purged in an unsung battle, and then it was set ablaze by Mesmer's flame. These seem to be two separate things. So first, let's talk about the war. The unsung battle. In an interview, Miyazaki references the war when he was asked about this wicker man enemy and replies, so this giant basket of flame was a terrible, gruesome weapon used in a war that occurred in the Land of Shadow. The kindling that you see is actually the remains of bodies. 
that were put in there to burn. As for whose enemies were put inside the Wicker Man, I'd wager that it was Marika's enemies, since she's the one Yikes. who came out victorious as a god, and with the Golden Tree as well. Just speculation, though. Zully the Witch points out that the Wicker Man traces its origins back to Celtic myth, where people were allegedly sacrificed within a Wicker statue. And many that seems unpleasant. Have pointed out that this design may have instead been drawn. Berserk! They were never saints. They just happened to be on the losing side of a war. If you look closely, you can actually see a main flame giant, fire giant, around a face on the Wicker Man's upper thighs. Red hair like <laughs> this is referenced in the giant's red braid. I love the fire giants. Every giant I'm sad they're extinct. I hope we Rabbit get another one. was said to have despised his own red locks. Perhaps that was a curse of their kind. Incidentally, the red hair here is just one of many symbols in the trailer that are considered blasphemous over in the lands between. Omen horns, for example, are Another such Ooh, symbol that's a good of despised beings category. the Golden Order. And human horns are seen here on the Wicker Man, here upon the Lion Dancer, here on these enemies, and even upon the Roaring Rune Bear. Fire Giant. Which also has that red hair. And then there's this hippo thing that's crucible aspect of the Crucible, which were also aspects that became Is that how you spell crucible? and scorned. And then there's a spirit wielding the iron cleaver that's the signature weapon of the misbegotten who were also despised so lots of blasphemous <laughs> don't judge my spelling going on but and no character fire giant tell you right that as many of them as mesma who oh omen horns the character that is at the heart of the shadow of the earth tree dlc maybe even more so than nicola this is the demigod who would set ablaze the land of shadow mother wouldst thou truly lordship sanction in one so bereft of light so this is mesma and the mother he mentions is queen marika an official interview makes this quite clear to quote miyazaki and you may have seen at the end of the trailer there was this piece of key art where it shows Mesma sat in this throne-like chair, and people who've played the game may recognize this throne to be one of those from the boss room mm -hmm, where mm -hmm. you battle Morgot, and this represents the thrones at the base of the Erd Tree, and it's supposed to symbolize that Mesma stands on equal. Why is he in the Land of Shadows, though? Demigods and the children of Marika who sat around in these thrones and held the rooms of the Erd Tree. So he is an important figure who rivals these other demigods. And as you play the DLC, you will learn a little about why he wasn't featured in The Legends of the Erd Tree, The Lands Between. I don't know. You realize why he exists in this shadow, this land of shadow. As to who Mesma's father is, well, there are many signs that they're a product of Radigan. For one, there's the red hair. Mm -hmm. Then there's the fact that Mesma's name starts with M, which suits the naming convention for the children of Marika Radigan, who are Mikola, Melania, and possibly Melina. Speaking of Melina, we've talked many times about the butterfly theory, which posits that all children of Radigan Marika have a butterfly of their own. Mikola's is the nascent butterfly, Melania's is the Aeonian butterfly, and since Melina is the kindling maiden, we've long speculated that hers was the smoldering butterfly, mm -hmm, but now mm -hmm. it seems that butterfly could belong to Mesma instead, given his much more overt flame symbolism. That said, there is a fourth pink butterfly featured in the trailer now. Who is so that, though? It's possible... The butterfly theory is Melina back. Have wings. <gasps> if Mesma was legitimately born alongside the other children of Marika Radigan, that actually places his existence a little bit later in the timeline, still in the age of the Erd Tree, but after Radigan left Renala for Marika. Whatever the case, Mesma would find himself in the land of shadow, delivering death to those stripped of the grace of gold.
those stripped of the grace of gold shall all meet death in the embrace of Lesnar's flame. Since this line is delivered by a third party, it seems there's a common belief here that Mesmer's role is to deliver death to those stripped of grace who find themselves in the land of shadow. So Mesmer's pro golden order? Apparently, our tarnished who finds themselves at odds with Mesmer. Mother, wouldst thou truly lordship sanction in one so bereft of life? In this dialogue, I think Mesmer is questioning why Marika has seen fit to restore grace to the tarnished and sanction their lordship, guiding them to become Elden Lord, even though in his eyes we are bereft of light. Mesmer strikes me as a bit of a rebel and an outcast. He's not what you'd expect from someone who is clearly killing people bro this attack of the grace of God. this attack is gonna fuck so many people it's gonna kill everyone dude i swear to god look at this he is a bit of a rebel and look he goes in and he strikes the ground and then he and waits cast. and then he doubles <laughs> he does it again dude people are gonna get so triggered been stripped of the grace of gold <laughs> But I do ultimately think that he holds oh, and then they grab in regard. I do think he's doing I hope he's hard. this on her behalf. The fact that he sits on a demigod's throne might be evidence enough. Uh, but in an excellent bit of photo manipulation by user Wusa69 on Usa. Reddit, we can clearly spy a statue of what seems to be Marika in the background. It has her signature braid and her armband as well mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uniquely she's holding a baby who could be mesmer but that's just speculation we know marika uses people even her enemies even the blasphemous she oh my god the fire, fire giant's so giant cool just so it can watch over something for eternity she will disguise herself as radigan make her biggest rival fall in love with him and then abandon that rival and undo them from within that's dirty she bro condemn the misbegotten and then get one of them to craft weapons for a tarnished so that they can become elden lord so in a similar way i feel like mesmer being useful to marika despite very clearly being a blasphemous character really isn't that strange marika worst what girl I mean about confirmed mesmer being blasphemous well first there's the snakes. According mm. to the Gravekeeper cloak, the snake is viewed as a traitor to the Erd tree. Bro, and if we can get a snake build, snake build, I would be so hyped. I love snakes, man. Now snakes are way cooler than dragons. About and don't at me, man. Snake or the Great Serpent, which is what we assumed before. Whatever the case, there's no way that Mesmer's snakes would be looked upon favorably by the Golden Order. In the Erdtree Colosseums, for example, the audience delighted in seeing the bronze snakes on the armor of the gladiators be beaten and battered. And then there's Mesmer's usage of flame. According to the Spark Aromatic, fire was prohibited to those who served the Erdtree. While this rule was forgotten as the war drew ever on, I do think Mesmer might have some links to the flame of the fell god, if I had to guess. Mm. He's got the red hair, and the snakes do appear on the giant's flame forge in the mountaintops, but I'll admit these connections are pretty shaky. We don't know exactly what kind of flame Mesmer is using. I'm going to write fell god. And lastly, Mesmer clearly has a connection to dragon communion. Dragon Communion is also something that's frowned upon. Dragon Communion is the abhorrent act of consuming the hearts of dragons to commune with the ancient dragons and become more like them. According to the Magma Worm's Scale Sword, Dragon Communion is a grave transgression for which many partakers were cursed to crawl on their bellies as shadows of their former selves. As evidence for 
Mesmer's communion, his one good eye is yellow and slitted, which is a clear symptom of consuming the dragon hearts that even our tarnished gets afflicted with. And, not to mention, his winged armor looks a lot like the Drake Knight set, which is a set that labels the Drake Knights as partakers of communion. Then there's this symbol on the box art, and even the fire he conjures that looks a little bit like the dragon communion seal, but it's not a one-to-one -one match. And then serpents themselves are considered imperfect dragons, in Dark Souls lore, at least. And Mesmer's serpents are sprouting draconic wings, so there could be something there. On this promotional page, we also learn that Mesmer's full title is Mesmer the Impaler, and it could be that this name simply comes from his fighting style, but I will also point out, as many others have already, that there is a catacomb in the Lands Between called mm. the Impaler's Catacombs. So it's possible he got this reputation from certain deeds that he committed in the Lands Between. Of all the characters I can think of, only the Fire Giants and Marika come to mind as ever being impaled. The Fire Giants' stakes aren't identical to Mesmer's spear, but they are similar, and Marika being impaled at the end of the game never really had a good explanation, so maybe this is a chance for them to explain that, finally. So, in conclusion, I get the vibe that Mesmer is this rebellious, kind of blasphemous child, but that they're still loyal and, more importantly, still useful to their mother, who is Marika. Though, of course, all my opinions and speculations in this video, especially, are very subject to change. Next, let's talk about Mikola. Mikola! Mikola is many things. He is the demigod son of Queen Marika and her consort Radigan. He is Mikola the Nascent, cursed with eternal youth. He is Mikola the Unalloyed, who sought to find a cure for his sister's scarlet rot. He is Saint Trina, an alter ego who deals in sleep and dreams. And he is Mikola of the Halig Tree, a sort of Erd tree that he eventually embedded himself within. He's also the subject of an hour-long lore video on my channel, and I'm also going to be talking about him again later this week in a lore video about Moog, so please forgive me for being brief in my description of him here. Suffice to say though, Mikola is a very important demigod. He's also an Empyrean, which means he is a rare character eligible to become a god and succeed Queen Marika. Additionally, his sister says that he is the most fearsome Empyrean of all, and that he possesses the wisdom, the allure of a god. It's this allure that has led to his fate in the base game, which is to say he appears to be dead at the hands of Moog, who is Mikola's demigod half-brother. Moog ripped Mikola's cocoon out of the Halig tree and abducted him. Now Mikola's cocooned flesh lies in Mogwin Palace, and his withered arm there will become the entrance to the DLC. Miyazaki elaborates on this point, stating that Mikola has traveled to the land of shadow for his own reasons, and it's up to the player to follow in his footsteps, as many other NPCs also have before you. The poem reads, it was to this land that Mikola departed, divesting himself of his flesh, his strength, his lineage, of all things golden. The fact that Mikola has divested himself of his flesh reminds me a lot of Rani, who slays her own flesh intentionally in order to free her from the control of the two fingers. Through his own death, it seems, he has departed to the land of shadow though now he is without his strength. He's also likely divested himself from his great rune, which is probably this one seen here, which takes the same shape as this emote you get for pre-ordering, which is called Ring of Mikola. So all of this should explain why he needs you. The poem continues, 
And now Mikola awaits the return of his promised lord. Is that us? If I had to guess where we're ultimately headed, it would be the castle here, right beneath the shadow of the Erd Tree. Here, an Ark is catching the bounty of the Erd Tree, just like the Rune Arks do. And the sky above is enreathed by these ethereal cloth tapestries. According to Miyazaki, these tapestries are a veil, and they are a symbol of the Land of Shadows being hidden from the world outside. And speaking of veils, the Black Knives are assassins that are invisible due to their concealing mm -hmm. veils. And we have a talisman that is a part of those veils, put together from dark cloth with a lustrous sheen that completely hides the wearer's presence. Earlier, we talked about how Marika was likely responsible for the Land of Shadow being concealed or veiled, and according to the Black Knife Armor, the Black Knives are rumored to be Newman who had close ties with Marika herself, so maybe we're already starting to understand the nature of this veil. That said, the way this veil is laid brings to mind a lot of things. At first it reminded me of Marika's bedchambers, then I thought maybe it could represent Moog's bloody bedchamber, as he puts it. Or it could even represent the Balderkins of the deathbed companions, which, according to the Balderkins' blessings, are hidden temples in the guise of a bedchamber. This could represent Mikola's long-awaited rebirth, or maybe his eternal nascence. It could even represent the fact that he is Saint Trina, an alter ego that has to do with sleep and dreams. So many things. Speaking of Saint Trina, though, there's a brief shot of a masked character who looks like they're sleeping in a purple swamp. The droopy flowers in the background might be Saint Trina's lilies, and the purple haze of this swampy area oh my God. definitely gives off sleep. Are we not? We're not getting a poison swamp. We're getting a sleep recall, swamp. When Rani first meets with you in Elden Ring, she does so amidst a mist, which has put Kale and his donkey to sleep nearby. And the more I think about it, the more I think this encounter might have to do with Mikola. In this moment, well, Rani she gives you Mikola's horse, spirit right? Calling bell and three oh, wait, no. Mil which she does says. It are from Torrent's former master. And oh, considering we I knew see there was something there. What looks to be Mikola riding Torrent here in the Land of Shadow, I think we can reason that Torrent is Mikola's steed, and thus that Mikola has given you gifts via Rani and favored you ever since the very beginning of the game. But the rabbit hole goes deeper because Melina is the one who gives you Torrent's whistle at the start of the game. And since we've now learned that Torrent was likely in the Land of Shadow with Mikola, does that mean that Melina would have ventured to the Land of Shadow to retrieve Torrent from Mikola at some point? Remember, Melina's origins are largely unresolved in Elden Ring. So I really hope we learn more about her story in this place. The fact that she might have traveled to a land that's enwreathed in Mesmer's flame might also explain why she's burned and bodiless, but now I'm just engaging in unhinged speculation and these theories might have got out of hand. But let me do unhinged speculation on one more thing, and I want to draw your attention to the fact that we've learned that it's necessary to kill Radan to access the DLC. Mm -hmm. That's curious. It seems to hint that his death is essential for events in the Land of Shadow to make sense. Logically, this would be related to the meteor shower that happens after you kill him, right? Because it's in this moment that the fate in the night sky is suddenly let free. Perhaps Melania was even chasing this world state where fate is freed from the night sky and maybe she was sent here to kill Radan on behalf of Mikola when she fought him all those years ago. What's crazy is we still don't know why Melania fought Radan, so hopefully we get an answer <sighs> so to that cool. as well. 
And of course, most of you won't have to worry about killing Radan, as your characters are likely already at the end of the story. And speaking of the end of the Not story... Not me! I'm level Miyazaki's one. Miyazaki's recent interview reveals that they don't currently have plans to make a second DLC for Elden Ring. No! But whatever ending that's coming with no. Nicola might be the final one. Wait, does that mean but Elden that Ring 2? Confirmed? Mean that it's shaping up to be a good ending <sighs> with Nicola. Pure and radiant, he wields love to shrive clean the hearts of men. There is nothing more terrifying. To shrive is to hear confession, to assign penance and absolve someone. It sounds like a pretty harrowing process, and that is a perfect match for Mikola, who is described as both benevolent and fearsome. This is that ominous love of Mikola, which is a really unique vibe very excited to see where things will go. Believe it or not, I've still got a lot of the trailer to break down, but first, I'd like to finally reveal this. This is the Shadow of the Great Tree. Okay, a GG, GG. GG on that one. First video down. I think we got some good info here. Here, let's, uh, let's organize it a touch. Okay, so obviously Mikola is important here. Moog and Mikola kind of go together. Radon is his own thing, it seems. Uh, Saint Trina goes with the Mikola category. All right, and then Sleep, Saint Trina, that's all together here. Mesmer, I don't really know what Radon is cooking. He seems kind of on his own island. Um, all right, the Newman are kind of with the death thing and the black knife assassins. And then any, if you guys have any suggestions, I'd be happy to take them. Flame, fell god, this goes with Mesmer. Um, blasphemy, this is also kind of its own thing. Um, but it's also kind of a Mesmer thing. So we'll put it here. And then snake build. More Mesmer. Dragon communion, Drake knight, impaler catacombs. This is all Mesmer stuff. So yeah, this seems to be our most built out category so far just with that and it seems to be kind of the the way i'm leaning towards i do think we should watch more about Mikola and saint trina but i don't know i don't know if it's gonna come together all right so we have well, just a recap here we have Mikola, saint trina sleep oh you ah and then there's a Moog build that we could come in here with. I think Moog is similar to St. Trina, the Mikola thing, but not exactly. I don't know if we'd want to combine them. This is going to be blued. Blued. So then we have the Mesmer build here, where it's flame, potentially rated, related to the Fell God. Um, and then Blasphemous. We're looking for extremely blasphemous things to the Golden Order. So that's related to the red hair, fire giant kind of thing, the Crucible Knights, uh, maybe something with the Mistbegotten. Anything related to Omen Horns is going to be pretty blasphemous. The Snake Build, Dragon Communion thing also falls into the blasphemy area. And then the Drake Knight set could be something to take a look at because I think it's a cool looking armor set. Um, and it could fit the build. And then, um, the Impaler Catacombs, I'd love to visit as well. Radon, I don't really know what is going on here. Um, and then this is just kind of the Helfen Shadow build. Land of Shadows. Right? 
So we have the Land of Shadows, which is going to be related to the Veil of the Black Knife Assassins, vaguely related to death. And then there's, it's theorized that there might be some Newman connection as well. This could be another string to pull at. I think it's kind of cool. I think death is really cool and um, underutilized since there's not a ton of things that relate to it. It would also let us use Tish, which is the most broken summon in the game, in my opinion. Okay, let's find another video to watch. Okay, I think this one's pretty good here, how to fully prepare. Let's check out the... Um, Let's check out the chapters. Prepare for Shadow of the Erd Tree. Rune Farming, I'm not that interested in. Powerful Talismans, Powerful Buffs. Infinite Smithing Stones, Infinite Glove Wart. Golden Seeds and Sacred Tears. Larval Tears, Poise Guide. I mean, that could be interesting. A lot of this does not seem particularly relevant for what we're looking at, it's more gameplay tips. Once you've found a build that works for you, it's important to see how much poise you have with the armor or talismans you're wearing, which can be seen on the equipment screen here. The higher your poise, the less chance you have of being staggered by certain attacks. For most PvE builds, you're going to want at least 51 poise. This is a crucial breakpoint, as having less than this is actually borderline useless as far as PvE is concerned but having more than this will stop a ton of enemies in the game from knocking you around. There are some other good breakpoints to hit after 51, but if you really want to stack on the poise, know that there's not much point going beyond 101. To help you get over these breakpoints, consider using one or two pieces from heavier armor sets. The most poise heavy sets are the Bullgoat, Veteran, or Lionel set. The most powerful consumables in Elden Ring are rune arcs, which can be used to enable the power of whatever great rune you have equipped. Speaking of great runes, Radans or Morgoths are pretty much great for any build. Now, one way to quickly stock up on rune arcs is to visit- I'm not particular, particularly interested in this. Defeat Moog or defeat Radan. Ooh, which NPCs will appear in the Land of Shadows? Bye. I have one final question for you guys. Do you think that any NPCs in the base game will show up in the Land of Shadow? If so, who? There are certainly a few characters I can think Melina! of with unresolved quest lines. First and foremost is Melina, whose true purpose is alluded to, but never revealed. Most players will burn her in the Giant's Flame Forge, so for the DLC, I wonder if it'll be better to keep the Erd Tree unburnt and keep Melina alive instead. Of course, this means you won't be able to get to for Armazula, so this isn't exactly optimal. Next is Millicent, who has a rebirth alluded to at the end of her questline if you side with Gowrie and Millicent's sisters. And oh, this is good info, man. This is good info. Don't kill Melina. Millicent her you get a worse reward for doing this so this is not optimal but since the land of shadow dlc takes place in the present i do wonder if we'll see some continuation of her quest line i'll be looking out for that at least i personally think that it's kind of unlikely that existing quest lines will continue side with gowry continue in the DLC, but it's possible, and at least with a fresh new character, there's a chance that you will be able to continue these quest lines if you need to later. So I hope this video helped, good luck preparing your characters, and thank you very much for watching. Alright, so now we have Blood and Mikola. I think the Mikola one is going to be more useful to us, because I don't know if we're going to go for a blood build honestly i think it's just too much of a string to pull at where i don't know i mean we have to kill moog i don't know how involved him and his blood magic is going to be in the dlc so let's just get some more on the mikola side of things to see if we can flesh out a build a 
fundamentalist, the unalloyed, creator of Mikola is many things, a fundamentalist, the unalloyed, creator of the Halig Tree, Lord of the Eclipse, Saint Trina of the Cradle Song, and not just a demigod, but a fearsome Imperium who has been captured but is unresponsive for now. And after watching this video, I think you'll agree that Mikola is a topic that almost has to be explored further in some upcoming DLC, for how could they not be? Their character is surely too major, too foreshadowed, and too intriguing to just ignore. So let's learn everything that there is to know. For starters, Mikola is the demigod child of Queen Marika and King Consort Radigan, who, as I'm sure you're well aware at this point, are the same being. You can learn more about the timeline of events from my other videos, but basically, after Radigan left Renala, the Academy told Radigan to go fuck himself, basically, <laughs> uh, but Radigan took that literally. Oh he my god! <laughs> a third set of demigod children all on his own, who were the twins Mikola and Melania. These children appear to be represented by the butterfly items in the game, and the nascent butterfly appears to represent Mikola. Its description elaborates on his state of eternal childhood, stating that it appears as if it's just emerged from its cocoon for its entire life. Indeed, the word nascent means that something is just coming into existence and beginning to display signs of future potential. And that nascence is eternal for Mikola, and I think that this eternal nascence is incredibly important for his character. For Mikola and Melania both seem to occupy different sides of the life and death cycle. That's not to say that Mikola represents life and Melania represents death, rather it seems like both land somewhere in the middle of each process. Melania is constantly resisting her scarlet rot and is in this perpetual state of dying, and Mikola is in this constant state of nascence. He is newly born and showing an abundance of life and burgeoning potential. Special thanks to Quelag for making this clear to me. So Mikola is nascent, but he's also abundant, and I think that's another extremely key word for him. For example, there's this cut weapon called the Abundance and Decay Twinblade, which symbolizes the twins and suggests that the twins were born from an inseparable fate and hold the runes of both abundance and decay between them. Not to mention, the word abundance is also literally spoken by Mikola in his cut content. And thanks to a very recent discovery by Sekiro Dubi, we know this cut dialogue I'm about to voice is Mikola speaking. And here, he appears to be leading you towards a unique ending for the game, and he talks about his ability to make life flourish, stating, This is for thee, mine abundance, my drop of dew. Quench thy thirst throughout thy frame. Blossom and burgeon, time and again. Grow larger, stronger, until the day cometh, when thou canst share in my dream. Elden Ring, O oh Elden Ring, beget order most elegant from my tender. Bro! Is Mikola the Moonlight Child from Berserk? Mikola is Griffith, bro. That's my theory, man. Think about it. Think about it. If you or know, you know. I do want to say that Mikola talking about his abundance is cut content, and you shouldn't really take it as canon, but I think it does give us a deeper look at not only the powers that Mikola might have had, but also the world that he could create. He goes on to say, If thou covetest the throne, impress my vision upon thine heart. In the new world of thy making, all things will flourish, whether graceful or malign. And I love that final line, all things will flourish, whether graceful or malign. Because Mikola isn't enforcing any real notions of good or evil here. Instead, in the new world of his making, he simply wants all things to flourish. And I feel like that is a very unique viewpoint for a character in a Souls game. Not to mention, Mikola is certainly one of the few beings that is capable of creating this new world. That's because he is an Empyrean. He is one of the very few who were candidates chosen by the Two Fingers to succeed Queen Marika and become a god, to usher in a new age. Now we could go into an entire debate about 
why the twins are valid Imperians and why they were born afflicted, but honestly that could almost be an entire video of its own, so for now I'll just give the simple answer, which is that these twins were probably valid Imperians because they have singular parentage from a god, but that this singular parentage was probably also responsible for their afflictions as well, due to the almost Inbreeding. incestual implications of such a thing. Why do I feel like it was George R. R. Martin <laughs> that wrote this part? Anyway, let's move into the early childhood years of Mikola's eternal childhood. Mikola's early years were clearly quite inspired by their father, Radigan, who fostered a bit of a fundamentalist streak in his prodigal son, and Mikola would go on to invent fundamentalist incantations of his own, dubbed Discus of Light and Triple Rings of Light, which he gave as gifts to his father. These okay, okay, that's, that's big. <laughs> we gotta put that one in. Discus, discus of light, triple, there's two L's, triple rings of light. Okay, the bill's starting to come together. Well, that Radigan and Mikola had a good relationship, and Radigan must have been proud of his son, because these two spells do represent those two key fundamentals of the Golden Order. Namely that there is a law of causality, which is a branching cause and effect that goes outwards, but also that there is a law of regression, that all things yearn eternally to converge once again. And in gratitude, Radigan countered with a gift of his own, showing Mikola Radigan's rings of light. These incantations would go on to become core fundamentalist spells, as they are true to those two concepts that form the basis of the Golden Order, but there is another aspect of Golden Order fundamentalism, and that is the persecution of those who live in death. Hunters of these undead would attempt to stamp them out with spells such as Order's Blade and Litany of Proper Death, which deal additional damage against those who live in death and prevent them from... What did he would say? attempt to stamp them out with spells such as Order's Blade and Litany of Proper Death, which Blade. deal additional damage against those who live in death Litany and prevent them from resurrecting. Proper to recap, those who live in death, death exist because of Godwin the Golden, who was one of the early sons of Marika and Godfrey, who was eventually killed with a fragment of the Rune of Death, and then the Rune of Death would eventually spread its undeath throughout the lands between via Death Root. And there is an entire debate that we could have here about whether the persecution of those who live in death is even true to the core principles of fundamentalism. Goldmask certainly doesn't seem to think so. In fact, according to the Order Healing spell, Goldmask laments the hunters of those who live in death, deeming them to be fanatics who wanted nothing more than an absolute evil to contend with. And the reason I bring up this debate at all is because you could argue that Mikola was on the side of these fanatic hunters, as he created multiple weapons that were capable of effectively slaying those who live in death. For example, this is Golden Epitaph, and it is a sword that was made to commemorate the death of Godwin the Golden, first of the demigods to die. It is infused with the humble prayer of a young boy, and reads, O oh brother, Lord brother, please die a true death. So this weapon is an effective tool of killing those who live in death permanently, and clearly the young boy who created it was Mikola. We can infer this because the sigil that appears when you use this blade's skill is the Halic Tree sigil, and once activated, this ability, called Last Rites, imbues the sword with a holy power that prevents those who live in death from reviving. But beyond this being a potential tool to slay those who live in death, is that this weapon points towards an early kinship between Mikola and Godwin, a relationship that might have made it all the more painful when Godwin's soul would perish, but his body would remain, spawning Deathroot. This is interesting, as it gives Mikola a legitimate emotional grievance against those who live in death. And it's almost a bit hypocritical, I think, for what I believe to be Mikola's character, as 
we previously established that he might have been this character who wants all life to flourish, but I guess that principle might not extend to those who live in death for him. This sword might not be the only representation of Mikola's relationship with Godwin. That relationship is potentially strengthened even more when we consider this statue found in Alfail before the Halig tree. It depicts a larger figure, who is clearly embracing the two Imperian twins, Mikola and Melania, but then who is this larger figure? It could be their parent, Marika or Radigan, but then it doesn't have their signature hair braid, and instead it has this long, wavy hair. What's more, the statue asset is flat-chested, which appears to rule out Marika, at least. And after reading a good amount of debate online about this, I think it's a fair conclusion to say that this statue represents Godwin, who himself does seem to have long, wavy hair. And this statue being enshrined here really tells a story. It's a story of two gifted but afflicted siblings who were supported by their older brother, but then they were left alone, as their older brother would become the first demigod to die. And this isn't the only statue in this location, far more prominent in the area are these statues, which depict two siblings left alone after their brother died. There was one sibling, Mikola, who was forced to remain as a young child, and another who grew up in great pain, eventually losing vision and limbs to rot and decay. These statues are everywhere in the Halig Tree, and they tell that sorrowful story. They are an early sign of Mikola's extreme empathy for his sister, and they foreshadow his desperate attempts to give her relief from her terrifying condition. And so, the young Mikola abandoned fundamentalism, for it could do nothing to treat Melania's accursed rot. This was the beginning of unalloyed gold. So what is unalloyed gold? Well, an alloy is something that's created when you combine metals, usually because you want to create a stronger compound at the expense of its purity. So if we were to view Marika's golden order as if it were a metal, which I think is something that the law wants you to do considering the implications of the tarnished and everything like that, then Marika's golden order would definitely be an alloyed metal. Just think of all the foreign powers that it's absorbed in the interest of strength. For example, Godfrey and his Crucible Knights were enlisted to devastate Marika's enemies, the ancient dragons were won over and eventually became a part of Laindel's forces, even the House of the Erd Tree and the Moon were married at one point. Literally. After all, as Muriel puts it, all things can be conjoined under the Golden Order, so I think Marika was definitely open to fusing factions and ideologies to an extent, as long as it made her treasured Golden Order alloy stronger. So hopefully now you understand what I mean when I say that Mikola's gold is unalloyed, it is pure, it is untainted, and it is, perhaps, a singular ideology. And if you subscribe to the idea that the cut content is still representative of Mikola, then I would say that his ideology is what I had Mikola quote earlier, that in his new world all things should be allowed to flourish, whether graceful or malign, and that that is his pure ideology. Though of course, that is my speculation based on cut content as well, so please keep that in mind. But Mikola's unalloyed gold couldn't have just been this metaphysical concept of pure ideology, it was a physical material as well. For example, this is an unalloyed gold water lily, said to have been beloved by Mikola. This is a bewitching branch, blessed with an incantation of unalloyed gold. Unalloyed gold decorated the armor and shields of his soldiers, it was inserted- Hold, hold, hold! We're getting items. This is- Bewitching branch? It's a bewitching branch, blessed with an incantation of unalloyed gold. Unalloyed gold decorated the armor and Sacred shields of his soldiers, crown. it was inserted into their weapons, Helm. and most importantly, perhaps, it was forged into a set of armor Loretta's for his sister, Melania. 
Because, or remember, safe. the whole reason Mikola embraced unalloyed gold in the first place, it seems, was because he thought that it could treat his sister's accursed rot, while fundamentalism could not. And he was right, for Melania's scarlet rot is no mere disease, it's literally the divine essence of an outer god, and Melania is its vessel that will one day bloom into a true goddess. But unalloyed gold is one of the few materials in the game that can ward away such meddling of the outer gods. Another example are the mirror helms, like the one that E.G. wears, which literally reflects the influence of the Outer Gods. And personally, I think the reason that unalloyed gold inhibits the meddling of the Outer Gods is because it is a pure metal and potentially a pure ideology. But if that's not enough reason for you, then Quelag actually has a great video where she breaks down potential reasons at a chemical level. But at any rate, reasons aside, Mikola crafted needles of unalloyed gold, which could be inserted into the tortured flesh of one afflicted by rot to alleviate their suffering and forestall the effects of the rot. And true to the needles' descriptions, the outer god of rot isn't the only one affected by this. Our character actually uses the final version of this unalloyed gold needle to subdue the outer god of frenzy which is something you might want if you decided to be a terrible person and burn down the world. Anyway, when we first find Mikola's needle, it's been broken, snapped in half and picked up by a commander at the very center of the Scarlet Swamp. But once this needle has been prepared, we can give the Golden Needle to Millicent, proving that it does indeed work to forestall the rotting sickness, to remove pain and nightmares from the afflicted. It is, after all, lovingly crafted by Mikola himself. Well, well, this is a marvel indeed. The work of a true artisan, a meticulous, bold craftsman who grasps the essence of life. In crafting these needles and pursuing unalloyed gold, Mikola is attempting to save his sister from her affliction. It seems like this objectively good deed, which is a rare sight in Elden Ring, especially for a demigod whose strengths have been known to tip them towards madness, and that is what makes Mikola such a pure and likable character in Elden Ring. So it's no wonder really that Melania venerated her brother. She is a character of undefeated prowess, and she's an Empyrean, no less. And yet, she dedicated her blade to Mikola, and Mikola alone for she believes that he possesses the wisdom, the allure of a god, and that he is the most fearsome Empyrean of all. The story of their bond and duty to one another is legendary, and that's something that becomes quite clear when we explore Mikola's Halig tree and see these statues depicting their embrace all around. And if you were one of the many defiled outcasts in Elden Ring, you too might have felt inspired by this story, and you might have felt inclined to earn Mikola's favor and make the long pilgrimage towards your salvation, towards the distant divine Halig tree and its brace that was Mikola's domain. So first, what even is the Halig tree? Well, it's pretty obvious that it's a sort of Erd tree. For one, Erd tree avatars have clearly emerged from it, which they only do in order to protect the Erd tree's own offspring. And then there's the Halig tree knight armor, which confirms that the Halig tree ultimately failed to grow into an Erd tree. And one thing I've been wondering is when exactly was the Halig tree planted then? If we knew when, then we might be able to guess at its purpose. Was it planted before or after the shattering of the Elden Ring? Because when the Elden Ring was shattered, golden seeds flew from the Erd Tree, scattering across the various lands as if life itself knew that its end had come. These seeds create these little illusory trees and likely spawned the minor Erd Trees as well, so I think it's a fair assumption that Mikola might have planted the Halig Tree from an Erd Tree seed. And if that was indeed the case, then it should have happened after the Shattering, for before that, the Erd Tree was considered perfect and eternal, and it wasn't even believed that Erd Tree seeds could exist. But on the flip side, the Golden Epitaph sword that we mentioned earlier likely existed before the Shattering as it was created to commemorate Godwin's death. And this sword displays the Halig Tree sigil when its weapon art is activated, so one could infer that the Halig Tree must have existed at this point too, right? 
So I guess it's always possible that Mikola somehow procured an Erd tree seed before the shattering, or simply grew it from his own being, as he is a scion of the Golden Bough, after all. But whatever the case, Mikola clearly decided that growing such a tree was important, and he even went so far as to water it with his own blood. This confirms that the Erd tree is indeed a blood-sucking parasite. <laughs> Just kidding. Sort of. I mean, you have to admit, it is pretty disturbing that an Erd tree could flourish in such a manner. But this does lead us to the final question, which is, why was the Halig tree planted? What was the point of it? And at the end of the day, the main reason is always going to be because it's like the Erd tree. It's natural to compare them, and the item descriptions seem to want you to compare them as well. The Erd Tree is this enormous icon of power and faith in the lands between, so evoking that and inspiring worship is clearly a valuable thing. But the Erd Tree was only really an icon of faith in its later years. Before that, it was a symbol of abundance, with light as warm as the gentle sun that could gradually heal all those who bathed in its rays. But perhaps most importantly, during this time of abundance, it would drip sacred dew, sap or tears that could bestow blessings, form crystal tears, and even be embedded into talismans. These were treasured things, and naturally this was an extremely valuable symbol for Mikola to evoke, since he is himself associated with dew and abundance in the cut content. And his Halig tree did drip with dew. The greenish amber of the Halig tree can even be seen in cut content items. It even looks as if it's mingled with a bit of Mikola's own blood. And that signature green hue of Halig Tree Amber is also seen in the Halig Tree Knight Sword, which is not a cut weapon, and this was modelled after the Carrion Knight's own swords, except it was embedded with Amber from the Halig Tree instead of Glintstone. Okay, so the Halig Tree is a great symbol of faith and power and abundance, and Mikola is related to abundance in the cut content, but what else does the Halig Tree add in terms of value? Well, the Halig Tree itself is something of a vessel, fit for a god. Mikola plants himself inside it later on. Uh, Melania returns home to it. And speaking of it being a home, many of the creatures have made their home within the tree, and within the brace that supports it as well. And I guess you could also argue that the Halig Tree might be a sort of a tool to be used. After all, Marika puts the Erd Tree to use in such a way, using its roots to absorb people after their death and perhaps even its branches to rebirth life. And then the Erd Tree is later used as a prison, with thorns that are almost entirely impenetrable. But I don't think Mikola planned to use the Halig Tree in such a way. Perhaps the biggest difference between the Halig Tree and the Erd Tree is that the Halig Tree was built in a largely inhospitable region. It is extremely difficult to reach, and Unlike the Erd Tree, it might not really be designed for the benefit of the vast majority of the world. As it stands, the Halig Tree strikes me as being more like the painted world from Dark Souls. It's a place for the outcasts, the heretical, and the malign. Not to mention the low and the meek, who are specifically named in the description of the Sacred Crown Helm. While many of the Scarlet Rod Afflicted seem to be here because of the eventual decay of the Halig Tree, I think that there are a number of refugees here that would have been here before that, namely the Misbegotten, the Crystallian, these astray mages of Raya Lucaria, and of course Loretta, who deemed this place to be a great haven for the despised Albanorix. The second generation Albanorix even carry a weapon called the Ivory Sickle, which reads, these weapons are evidence of their dedication to the Halig Tree, despite never having entered its presence. And we really don't find a single Albanoric within the Halig Tree. I'll admit, I do find this a bit strange. You do find quite a few Albanorics so close to the Halig Tree. It's a bit strange to me they don't go just that little bit further. Uh, the reason given for the first generation of Albanorix not being at the Halig Tree is given by Albus, who says that their faded lakes are the reason for that. But yeah, we find them defending Mikola and his Halig Tree all the same, at the Ordina Liturgical Town, which takes us to the Halig Tree via a puzzle within an Everjail. The word liturgical means relating to public worship, and this town is fittingly filled with many statues of Mikola sitting alone, cradling what might have become the Halig Tree back when it was still just a sapling. 
I also find it interesting that the Halig tree is never called out as competing with the Erd tree or never called out for housing all these undesirables. Perhaps the house of the Erd tree was happy to see ungraceful folk leave their lands. Perhaps the Halig tree was extremely well hidden from everyone and they didn't know. Or what is perhaps Mikola could just get away with it because he was beloved by all. For example, the Bewitching Branch is an item that you can create from Mikola's lilies, and it is blessed with an incantation of unalloyed gold and reads, The Empyrean Mikola is loved by many people. Indeed, he has learned of DNA. very well how to compel <laughs> such affection. Okay. And that second part that says he has learned how to compel affection, to me, that's saying that I'm in the same is boat. very good I'm in the at same knowing boat. how to inspire others' affection to his own advantage. And nowhere is this The Mikola build is coming together. Than at Castle of Soul. Oh my god, that lightning scared me. This is the Halig Tree Secret Medallion. It's furnished with that signature green amber, and it features the Halig Tree in the background, for it allows you to access a secret lower level of the Grand Lift of Rold and progress through the consecrated snowfields to this sacred place. Having both halves of this secret medallion is therefore extremely desirable, for the medallion has another name. It's called Mikola's Favor. Mikola's Favor can be yours. <laughs> Slaughter, 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 the all-hearing slaughtered, but alas, it was for naught, but all you need do is snatch it from the big pot. Gideon is the all-hearing man in this dialogue, and he slaughtered an entire village just for one half of this medallion, but he did not find it in Albus's possession. But you can. And the other half is at Castle Sol, right before a nameless phantom who says this. Lord Mikola, forgive me. The sun has not been swallowed. Our prayers were lacking. Your comrade remains soulless. I will never set my eyes upon it now. Your divine halig tree. So this phantom seemingly has, or I guess had, one half of the medallion, and yet he laments that he will now never set eyes upon the Halig Tree. To me, this suggests that Mikola might have been withholding the second half of the medallion from him, or that this phantom believed that he could solicit the second half of the medallion from Mikola and make it to the Halig Tree if he achieved his goal here at Castle Sol and basically earned Mikola's favor. But what exactly was supposed to happen here at Castle Sol? What does it mean when the Phantom says, The sun has not been swallowed, our prayers were lacking, your comrade Black remains flame? soulless? It means, I think, that the residents of Castle Sol and Mikola were attempting to restore the dead soul of Godwin the Golden. And just to refresh your memory, when a fragment of the Rune of Death was used to kill Godwin, it was also being used at the exact same time to kill Rani, and since they perished at the same time, Rani lost her body, and Mikola's demigod brother, Godwin, perished in soul alone. And despite this death seeming so final, Mikola clearly believes that some sort of ritual performed here could restore the soul of his comrade. For example, here's some more dialogue from a different phantom that reads, O oh great sun, frigid sun of soul, surrender yourself to the eclipse, grant life to the soulless bones. But the question is how? How does that work? How does an eclipse restore life to Godwin? Now you can just take Mikola at face value and trust that he knows what he's doing, or we can try to learn as much as we can about the eclipse and see if we can reason out the mechanism behind this process. So at Castle Sol, we find the Eclipse Chotel, which reads, Storied sword and treasure of Castle Sol that depicts an eclipsed sun drained of color. In Sol, the sight of an eclipse inspires a dreadful awe, preventing an onlooker from averting his gaze. The most important part of this description, though, is the part that says it's the storied sword of Castle Sol, as this proves that the veneration of the eclipse here goes back a long way. But what does an eclipse represent? So, according to the Eclipse Crest Shields, the eclipsed sun, drained of color, is the protective star 
of soulless demigods. Honestly, I think calling it a protective star is kind of the closest we come to understanding the mechanism here, because you could reason that a protective star might be a sort of outer god that lends them power, though that is just speculation. The description goes on to say that the sun in eclipse is said to be the symbol of the wandering mausoleum where the soulless demigods slumber. So note that it says demigods plural here. Now this could be because the wandering mausoleums come to house many demigods from a gameplay point of view, because you can take their remembrances here. But it could be a word that is slightly lost in translation as the Japanese version of the word demigods does not specify whether it's a plural or whether it's a singular word, so my take on this is that I think the wandering mausoleums became necessary when Godwin died. I think that the mausoleum was intended to be a resting place for him initially, but then also for any future demigods, as all of a sudden all of their true deaths had become possible as well with the theft of a fragment of the Rune of Death. The mausoleum knights themselves are these headless soldiers who behead themselves, willingly following their master into death. As such, they become these headless spirits, tied to the land so that they might better defend the walking mausoleums. They also carry eclipse crested shields, and the eclipse is said to aid the mausoleum knights by keeping destined death at bay. It is their symbol, and by keeping destined death at bay, maybe it's helping to keep their souls tied to the land? We could speculate for a long time on how the Eclipse has this power, and I've done my best, maybe other people have a better take on it, and maybe you guys do in the comments, but in the end it's simpler just to trust that Mikkelen knew what he was doing with the Eclipse at Castle Sol, where he wanted to block out the sun and restore Godwin's soul. Well that said, we can't trust him too much I guess, because it's important to remember that this ritual failed. According to this phantom, the sun was not swallowed. I guess the protective star of the soulless demigods did not listen to their prayers, and it did not appear. But it is really fascinating to learn that such a thing might even be possible. That Godwin, whose soul seems to be as dead as Rani's body, might actually not be? So if his soul is somewhere, then where has it fled to? A part of me wonders, if his soul is lost, then maybe it's lost within a dream. One theory I did come up with regarding the mechanism by which Godwin's soul is brought back by the Eclipse is that his soul might be brought back by bringing about a sort of artificial dusk with the Eclipse. That's because those who live in death are called the Duskborn after all, so there is an association between night and death, to be sure. And there's also an association between death and sleep. For example, when you pursue Fear's questline, you use her as a medium to enter Godwin's deathbed dream, which is an entire dreamscape where the dragon Fortisax is futilely fighting against the death in his companion. And then there's Roger, who speaks this line of dialogue as he is on the precipice of succumbing to Deathroot. Maybe I should tell you. Lately, I feel I'm on the precipice of falling into a deep, fathomless slumber. He does say he's about to fall into sleep. So, in conclusion, a realm of death does seem accessible through dream, and I think this is the perfect time to mention that Mikola has an alter ego. Some say she is a comely young girl, others are sure he is a boy. This is where we have to talk about the enigmatic figure named Saint Trina. Perhaps the biggest in-game clue about St. Trina's true identity is Trina's Lily, which bears this undeniable resemblance to Mikola's Lily of Unalloyed Gold. Its description reveals that it is a symbol of faith in St. Trina, dulls the senses, preventing agitation. Naturally, it can be used to craft a bunch of sleep-afflicting items like St. Trina's Arrow, which states that the sweet oblivion of sleep can become quite the habit, and it tells of the priests of St. Trina who use these arrows to spread their teachings, though the Japanese description seems to specify that these were more of a tool used for their rituals. So it's largely left to your imagination as to what rituals these priests might have been performing, though I will mention that it seems St. Trina might actually be able to be found somewhere within sleep. 
This is suggested by Feather's cookbook, which reads, a record of crafting techniques left by a man who was utterly captivated by Saint Trina. He continued the search for her in his slumber. We get a side profile of her in the hilt I do like of this Saint idea Trina's here. sword, which hints at that flowing astray hair that she has. The Saint Trina Mikola build is kind of coming of together. This feminine adult form upon Saint Trina's torch. The carvings depict Saint Trina, but in adult form, somewhat unnervingly. The carving is indeed unnerving, and it's certainly strange considering Mikola is supposed to be eternally a child. It raises the question. What has to happen for Mikola to grow up into this? And why is this bizarre creature the adult form that he takes? Another question worth asking, I think, is whether Mikola even has total control of Saint Trina. What if he's in a similar situation to Marika Radigan? Dude, I'm telling you, alter ego is Mikola is Griffith, man. And in the Moonlight Child. Almost as if they have their own free will. So... All of this is definitely a little bit of a disturbing view of what Saint Trina could be, but I guess we do have cut content that does somewhat reassure me that their alter ego is still a benevolent person. This cut content was first showcased by Sekudo Doobie, and this cut content is truly ancient. It exists in one of the oldest versions of the game that we know about, so a lot has probably changed since then, but regardless, here we can learn about St. Trina's crystal ball, which once read, A crystal ball full of mist, symbol of St. Trina of the Cradle Song, copies dream mist from a sleeping being. Dream mist was once used as an ingredient in rare and potent physics. May the quietude of slumber come to all and sundry, even to those whose red eyes burn with the flames of frenzy. Hmm. So this reveals that this cut version of St. Trina even once had sympathy for those afflicted by the flame of frenzy. They even went so far as to teach the merchants their songs. Our song derives from an old lullaby, sung for us long ago, deep inside our tomb. But whoever it was sings no longer. This melody allowed us to sleep. It looks like we're approaching the end of the uh the description of Mikola's songs of this video. as a lullaby is referenced by I think this one in the next chapter and then we're going to start which reads like planning our route or a quagmire in our final its build light purple haze irresistibly draws its victims down into sleep sweet dreams this is the closest thing we have to dream mist as well which was an item that you could again once collect from sleeping enemies and after you did this you were supposed to sell this dream mist to the merchants who used it to quell their flame of frenzy but as the merchants once said, whoever it was that sings, now sings no longer. And this is a detail that has remained intact even in the final version of Elden Ring, with St. Trina's sword stating that St. Trina's appearance was as sudden as their disappearance. Something clearly happened to Mikola that prevented them from continuing their work as St. Trina. And that is what we will discuss next. At some point, Mikola embedded himself into the Halic tree. Why he did this is never explicitly stated, but I think we can make a good attempt at puzzling it out. So, Mikola famously watered the Halic tree with his own blood, since it was a sapling, so I guess you could argue that he embedded himself in it to simply feed the tree more, which I guess is possible because the tree does eventually wither without Mikola inside it, and Gideon seems to tie his removal with the death of the Halig tree, or it turning into a husk. But I don't think that can be the only reason why he embedded himself. For instance, look closely at the Halig tree roots, and you'll see the form of a tree-like woman, and where her womb should be, there's a gap. A gap that once contained Mikola's cocoon cradled by the Halig tree. Now, either Mikola was attempting to fuse into and become this woman-like figure, who might even be the adult form shown on St. Trina's torch, or there was a rebirth occurring here. This is a cocoon within a womb, after all, so rebirth could have been the intent here. But regardless, it seems things ended prematurely for Mikola would eventually be ripped out of the womb, and the Halig tree would split and decay. And so, when we arrive at the Halig tree, and the town of Elphale that is built into the brace that supports it, 
The music here hits extremely hard. This place is just so sorrowful. For the Halig tree and Mikola's lilies and even St. Trina's lilies are all wilting. And all who live here are just hoping and praying for their Lord to return. I love the little detail of the guards looking outwards and sitting dejectedly. To make matters worse for them, it was here that they realized that the sacred light inside them would explode upon their imminent deaths. And yet, in spite of this, their spirit ashes show their faith and state, may the flash of our deaths guide Mikola's return. And Melania is here too, holding to the husk of Mikola, dreaming and waiting for Mikola to return, and believing full well that he will. Corpse after corpse left in my wake, as I awaited his return. Melania's set reveals that she believes her brother will keep his promise. So what was that promise, I wonder? Was it merely to return? Or was it something more? How much does Melania know? Why did she fight Radan? We'll have to talk about all of that in another video. So, there is still faith. There's even this one phantom in the consecrated snowfields who has somehow puzzled out who took Mikola and even where they are. He is pointed towards the portal that takes you to Mogwin Palace and Moog the Omen. So, indeed, it was the demigod Moog who somehow broke into the Halig tree and absconded with Mikola's infant form. And it's with him that this story ends. Or maybe it's where this story truly begins. Oh. Okay, I don't think we need to watch the last chapter here because it's not going to be entirely relevant to our build. Okay, so let me... Grab the wiki. And let's start crafting here. Let's start crafting a build. Alrighty. So, for this one, we're going to start build one here. With, let's just give a search here. Is there anything in here that will even, like, does Mikola have a wiki page? that we can look at. Mikola's lore, speculations, notes, and trivia. Not very relevant. Um, we're okay here. Let's check for the word abundance as well and see if there's anything here. I have a few more specific items, but I don't know if there's anything in there. Twin blades. Do they have the twin blade of abundance and decay? I don't think so, right? I th that was a cut weapon. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the fundamentalist stuff. All right, so we have the Golden Order Seal, Golden Order Incantations, Radagon Rings of Light, Golden Order Great Sword. Um. Law of Regression, Gold Mask, okay, we can, we can work from here, Golden Order Seal, so this is going to give us Discus of Light, Radagon Rings of Light, Triple Rings of Light, and Litany of Proper Death, those are the main, um, these are the main Fundamentalist spells mentioned. We also want to find Order's Blade, if we can. Order's Blade. So this is the Fundamentalist side of things. I also want to check out this golden epitaph, 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 um, this sword, I think this could be a pretty cool sword to use. I have not seen a lot of people use this sword. 
could be interesting. Um, okay. So these are kind of the main ideas of the fundamentalist side of things. And then now I think we want to start looking at the unalloyed gold side of things. We can also go for Saint Trina. Let's see what's going on here. Sword of Saint Trina. We got to check out the torch. And then are there any other Saint Trina items? Not really. And are not gear set pieces. Sword of Saint Trina. In strength dex. Mm. And then Saint Trina's sword. Now I want to get into um, like the Halig tree stuff and Loretta's armor. Loretta. Loretta's war sickle. Can we get Loretta's uh, armor set? Hmm. Because I'd love to get her hat. <laughs> this, this is crazy. This combo. Um, flow chart is nuts. Loretta. Loretta's Great Bow, the Sickle, Royal Knight Set. Is this, um, can be purchased from the Finger Reader after defeating Loretta. That is interesting. I feel like I'd want to run this armor. So this could be something. Golden Order Seal. We would want that. So I think this is mainly the build here for the Mikola side of things. These are the rough areas, right? We got the Royal Knight set, the Golden Order Seal, a handful of the Fundamentalist incantations then we have the godwin death commemoration sword and we also have the alter ego set side of things with the saint trina sword i guess we don't have another armor set the war sickle i don't think is going to happen for us But this is kind of what the build is looking like for that side of things. Now the other side of things that I want to check out is the Dragon Communion, Mesomer side of things. Because if I'm being completely honest, I think it still might be the side that I want to go towards. All right, let's check out because I don't know too much about this. Do they have the Fel God? I'm looking at the... Uh, anything related to the Fel God. Outer Gods. Fel? Fire Monk Incantations. One-eyed shield. Flame of the Fell God. Fire Monk incantations. Okay. 
So these are some of the incantations we're going to look for here. The one-eyed shield. This type of shield works best at reducing damage or guarding instead of parrying. What is it? What is the... I don't know what this is. Trick some shield made from stone depicting a malformed one-eyed god. The barrel of the firearm pokes through an open mouth. Once worshipped by the giants, the evil deity is believed to have been slain by Queen Marika. Okay. Then we're going to start cooking up. The dragon communion stuff. Dragon communion incantations. And I think we're mainly going to want to do. The scarlet rot and the fire ones. It's looking like. I want to check out this Drake Knight set. The Drake Knight. You get it from Crumbling Farm Azula. I kind of want to get the Clean Rot Knight set too, though. Clean rot set. In Kaled. Okay. We are also going to go to the Impaler's Catacombs. Then we need to get a nice weapon. Equipment, weapons. We are looking for, where is it? Not twin blades, not great axes. Great spears, spears. Vikes War Spear, Mogwin Sacred Spear. Maybe we just go Clean Rot Spear. What's the deal with the Death Ritual Spear? Celebrant's Rib Cage, Clayman's Harpoon, Pike, Spiked Seer. Cross Nagitana. Clean Rot Spear seems nice. Death Ritual Spear. Scaling. I don't think the Death Rite Bird is particularly related celebrants rib rake what is this what is it dropped from oh the windmill village is this um godskin type kind of stuff i don't think that's relevant the claimant's harpoon Um, oh, this is Siofra. The pike, just a normal pike. Stormville Castle. 
Spiked Spear. Okay, where is it found? Cross Nagitana Gale Tunnel. All right, I think we're honestly, I think it's time to start running it. We are on the clock here in terms of how much it's going to take us. And I think we can kind of go wide with it. The beginning of the game is not going to be too much um, in terms of hard choices we have to go down. I think they both require a degree of faith, strength, and dex. So we're going to have to do the beginning of the game a fairly similar way, right? Um, and we can kind of niche down into what we're going to go for as time passes. Um, let me just close out everything I don't need here. Let me open up the game. Pog. All right, I'm going to go to the restroom as well. Quickly. I'll be right back. Okie dokie. Got the controller. We are plugged in. Should be good. Here, can you guys hear me still? And then we're gonna go to... Actually, wait, let me make sure. Okay. 10-4. Aye, aye, Captain. All right, we gotta go to the game capture. We're going to Elden Ring. This should pop up shortly. And then Game audio, we want Elden Ring as well. But here's the thing, is that I, I'm gonna swap to PC in a minute. No worries, my friend. Oh, I quit the game. I think, um, yeah, it always switches me over when I plug my controller in. It, um, it swaps me over to, um, my, my audio, you know what I mean? Can you elaborate what's the cap card? I don't know what you mean by cap card. <laughs> um, can you elaborate what's the cap card? Capture card. Oh, I don't have a capture card. 
I am just uh, running it through OBS. I'm playing on PC. I have a graphics card. <laughs> okay. Can you hear this? Jesus Christ. WTB. Did I hear haha? -ha? What did I hear? Did you hear something? Oh. Okay, how's the volume here? Too loud? Not loud enough? <laughs> I plugged in my controller. I plugged in my controller. Maybe that's what I, <laughs> there's I feel like there was a miscommunication here. <laughs> no capture card. <laughs> No capture card confirmed. All right, we are going to go. And let me just pull this up real quick. Uh, don't switch. I want to grab my uh, my build stuff. We don't need the great spears. Okay, great. It seems like we're incentivized to head over to Kaled fairly soon. Um, so we're going to go new game. <gasps> Poggies. Intro cutscene. Oh, never mind. Character creation. Okay, so I think our best bet here is to go profit since we're going to go for the faith side of things. I can't type on mobile. No worries, my friend. <laughs> I think we're better off. I think I'm in between, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in between starting Profit or starting Wretch. I normally would start Wretch for, um, <laughs> I can't mouse over your emote. Oh, <laughs> that's such a funny emote. I think I'm just going to start Profit, honestly. Um, because I don't know when the earliest seal we can get is. And I'd love to start using some of those fundamentalist incantations or dragon communion spells or monk, flame monk spells, incantations, I keep calling them spells, early on. Um, so let's go for the profit. One second, I just like to take notes. I, the main reason I have the timer is to take notes on uh, when I need to edit. So 150-ish, we're doing character creation. Alrighty. I usually like to play a type B body. Um, what's our name gonna be? I think we wanna go mature, because we're not a child. Young. Maybe we are a child. If we're going the Mikola side of things. Origin, profit, keepsake. I think we're best off just taking... Oh, the bewitching branch is nice. Five sacred branches charged with beguiling power. Set to originate from the demigod Mikola. I think we just want to go golden seed. This is not necessarily uh, a challenge run. So... All right, let's go skin color. I think we're going to be pretty pale. Well, actually, wait. I want to be a Newman. But I want to make a detailed appearance. Aged. Is there a way to test this out? Young voice. Oh, here it is. Let's go young voice one. And then... I think we want to be like a light gray. This suits us, I think. Alter face and hair color. I would like to be 
red haired. I think. <laughs> what is going on here? I think we want a darker, like a deeper orangey red. Maybe something around here seems correct. I think that seems correct. If we're going for the fire giant Radagon kind of side of things. Luster. Oh, you mother. Gentle or strong luster? I think we want a gentle luster. Root darkness, white hairs. We would like no white hairs, I don't think. Root darkness. Sure. I would like to have a better hair cut, though. Oh, that's hurt. That's painful. I'd like something kind of wild. Long, more wild hair. Like, this is too kempt for my side of things. This is a touch too wild. Maybe we go here with it. I'm kind of liking this. Eyebrows, I don't really care too, too much. Eyelashes, eyes, I would like to try and do. The right eye, right? There, this is our left eye. How does this work? Which one is their right or left? Okay. Skin features. I don't think I care. Tattoo slash mark. I think we're gonna stay no tattoo, no mark. It could add to the lore, but I think we're okay without it. Body. I think we're gonna go standard. And then for a name, what should we name our character? What is our name gonna be? Let's go with Ooh, um, <laughs> I think I was thinking two words. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, I'm thinking maybe something related to Mikola. Like, what about like, Halig Tree <laughs> Resident? Uh. Enjoyer. Tongue tied. Put it into Latin. And act pretentious. <laughs> uh, could do. Could do. Why not? Halig tree resident in Latin. Oh, I don't think they have Latin in Google Translate. <laughs> I mean, I'm just coming up with ideas here. <laughs> the jokes are better than nothing.
unalloyed. What about unalloyed Halig tree? Halig tree. Shadow land. Shadow lands. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. What about Jeff? <laughs> Alright, this is the one we're going with. Halig Resident. Haley Resident. I think that's fine. Okay. Hello. Okay. Move. <laughs> Jeff Soyeb. <laughs> Sozeb. Sozeb? Soyeb, I, I pronounce it. <laughs> it's crazy that every Twitch streamer works for Bezos. All right, it's happening. <laughs> Thor, Pog. Oh, I love the intro cutscene. America. Queen Marika the Eternal is nowhere to be found. And in the night of the Black Knives, Godwin the Golden. Godwin did nothing wrong. Was first to perish. Soon, Marika's offspring, demigods all. Claimed the shards of the Elden Ring. Piccolo. The mad taint of their newfound strength triggered the shattering. A war from which no A war leading to abandonment by the greater will. Oh, Ooh. rise now, ye tarnished, ye dead. Oh my god, it's happening. The Elden Ring. The call of long lost grace speaks to us all. That's my goat right there. The ever brilliant gold mask. Fear the deathbed companion. Doing God's work. The loathsome dung eater. He eat the poo poo. And Sir Gideon Ophnir. The all knowing. Yay. And one other whom Grace would again bless. <laughs> oh, and this fucking loser. <laughs> No 
No maidens. Broke. Level Cross six looking. Fall <laughs> to the lands between. To stand before the Elden Ring. And become the Elden Lord. Yay. Right there. All right. Hello. All right, we're so cooked, right? We're getting a few stutters. All right, we're back, we're back. We're so cooked, right? You think we can beat the Grafted Scion? What level do I start out with as Prophet? Level seven, level seven, okay. I literally scribbled down two new leads. Are you cooking something over there? You got some lore? Oh, we're at Elden Ring. Chapel of Anticipation. I can't beat that guy. I've never beat him first try on this thing either. What do we start with? Catch Flame? I mean, we're so cooked. It's it's donezo. I think our best bet is honestly just going in with the shield. I'm not going to catch Flame this dude. Right. I'm just trying to get my, uh, I have to go Vagabond and Ball up. <laughs> Based. I'm trying to get my bearings back. You know what I mean? Not my bell bearings, but my actual bearings. Alright, let's cook this dude. First try. <laughs> it was looking good there for a second. You believed. You believed. <laughs> that shield does not work against that guy. <laughs> I had hard faith. I appreciate that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. The support is big. Pog. I'm not dead. <laughs> we gotta get these ugly ass clothes off me. I think the big play is to try and get a few levels quickly. And then see if we can make our way over to Kaled and farm some cre clean rat clean rot knights asap i'd love to get don't worry torrent torrent fortune is on her side i'd love to get some bell bearings and upgrade we the weapon found her here after all one of her kind is sure to see the Elden Ring. I'm going to reset my timer real quick. Even if it does violate the Golden Order. I think it makes sense to start the timer with the game. We're not doing a speed run, but it just makes sense now. The clean rot knights do stomp around a little erratic. <laughs> By <a> late. <laughs> You'd expect them to be cleaner. <laughs> Violent? Is that, is that a clue? Could be. 
Everything's a clue. Nothing is here for no reason. All right, do we uh do we start off by go kill by go kill Rick? We go kill Rick. Anything over here? Anything in the nooks and crannies? I'm pretty sure there's nothing. We just um, yeah, we gotta get up there. Let's go kill Rick, man. Beep, bomp. Touch grace, bro. Sick. Get wrecked, nerd. I am worried that I'm not going to be able to, um, I forget, you have to do the thing, right? And then you heavy attack. Shield, what's it called? Repost or whatever. Don't hit me. I'm going to try it on this guy. I forget how to do it, right? Just hit me, please. Hit me! Oh, I'm, I see your message. I'm going to just try. He Hello? Thank you, thank you. Okay, I do need to clean. Uh, I've pretty much done this for three or four hours a day since Halloween is an obsession. Don't sound over dramatic or underexplained, but the idea I went down is I went down the rabbit hole and came out and slipped into a new one. It was so fun. I totally feel you. And I do support you cleaning and doing real life things. Thank you for being here. Um, but yeah, I love getting immersed in the lore and stuff like that. That's kind of the whole thing I'm trying to shape this channel around is finding a little rabbit hole to, um, to hyper fixate on for a couple weeks. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Hudson. Thank you. You're the man. I'm glad you're just as excited about this stuff as I am. Wait. Come on. Pink. Spear is pretty lit, dude. I think the clean rot Mr. Impaler kind of side of things would be very cool. Hello? Dude, he almost nicked me there. Oh, oopsies. Game is hard. Just press R1. Am I supposed to sneak up on you? Oh, 282 damage. Let's go. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. <laughs> get cooked, nerd. Should we try and parry? Should I embarrass myself here? Fuck. Shit. <laughs> alright, alright. We got it this time. Christ. Alright, one more. Give me one more. I can take it. No. <laughs> alright, we got it. We got it. We got it. Come on. Let's go. I'm a, I'm a loser, bro. Okay, this was this is the one. Shit! All right, you're you're done. Pairings for nerds. I use that shield once to switch to seal. <laughs> All right. 
Uh, no, Snake America. Rick, Ricky. Should we catch flame, Rick? Ow. He almost got me there. I was trying to be too swaggy. <laughs> this is a tough enemy. One of the hardest bosses in the game, you know? No, no one says it, but it's actually true. Godskin duo is nothing. Rick is the hard one. Where's the collectible? Strength! Where is it? Which one did I get? Strength. Yeah, I'm strong. What? Open. Three flame lame Rick. I don't know about the wooden one. Most parries have a sick quality of life trick where if you parry a wall, it'll show sparks or splinters during the parry window. Oh, I see what you're saying. It's like right, bunk, bunk. I see what you're saying, that's kind of cool. Um, I'm gonna test the settings real quick because there's a bit of a stutter that on I'm not happy with it. let's go can we just go low quality and then see if the stutter goes away I all right let's go to main menu hello um, yeah quick game I'll just reload real quick Um, it's, yeah, it's so helpful. I won't be Trina backseat, trying to just say Trina backseat. It's okay, honestly. Um, I think that I'm starving enough for any chat interaction that backseating is okay. And I'm, you seem very pleasant, Hudson. I'm sure you're not gonna, uh, overstep your bounds and call me a loser <laughs> or anything like that. I do think that, like, if there are half a dozen people all telling you to do different things, it's super annoying. But if it's just, you know, me and you here, or <laughs> a handful of us, um, then we'll be okay. Um, <laughs> I won't take advantage of that low price. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I wouldn't blame you. Yay. Flasks. The stutter did not fully resolve itself, to be honest. Maybe... Is there a... Um... Can I cap the frame rate here? Resolution, advanced settings, grass quality. It only is medium. You can't have low grass quality. Depth of field, whatever. Quality settings, ray tracing. That's all that we got, right? Cross region play. Subtitles, subtitles on master volume. I think we want the music to be down a touch. Just for the editing side of things. Okay, whatever. That's a, that's as good as it's getting. Yay, yay. Uppies, give uppies. Man, I remember the first time I came out here. 
A tree. Tree Sentinel Bog. Um, quality of life is something I feel is A tier, zero spoilers, and gets a pass. I kind of agree. If it's something that it's like, I'm slamming my head against the wall trying to do something, um, and I can't figure it out, and there's like an easy solution that you just need to know, I think that's totally fine. Oh, yes. Tarnished, are we? Tarnished, Come are we? The lands between for the Elden Ring? Hmm? Of course you have. No shame in it. Unfortunately for you, however, you are maidenless. No maidens. Without guidance, without the strength of runes, and without an invitation to the round table hold, you are fated, it seems, to die in obscurity. Lit. Do I have enough for a level? Oh, I don't even have leveling abilities. All right. Luckily for you, however, there is one shining ray of hope for even the maidenless. It's up there. Vare. Oh. Vare. Care to listen. Whatever. Are you familiar with grace, the golden light that gives life to you tarnished? You may also behold its golden rays pointing in a particular direction at times. That wow. is the guidance it's right there. of grace. A path that a tarnished must travel. Hmm. Indeed. Grace's guidance holds the answers. It will lead you tarnished to the path you are meant to follow. Even if it leads you to your grave. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? Grace's guidance will reveal the path forward, most certainly. To Castle Stormvale, over on the cliff. Cool. The home of the decrepit demigod, <laughs> Godric the Drasted. It's yeah. time you set off, I should think. Okay, bye. Stormvale bye. The cliff, bye. Where Grace, if you see Maidenless, I'm maidenless, I get it. You got where's your maiden, bro? It's time you cast if you seek the elder. He's talking a lot of shit. I don't see his maiden. Oh, I made a mistake. I made it. Oh, I'm rolling, rolling, rolling. What? Do we, uh. even attempt to fight the Tree Sentinel? Are we even gonna try it? Sag. One second. I think we just swallow our pride and go to uh, the church. Church of Elith, let's go! You're a tarnished. I can see it. And I can also see that you're not after my throat. That's a then big why assumption. I a little something. I am Kale. Purveyor of fine goods. Kale. Um, I don't think we need anything from you right now. The crafting pouch, I guess we get eventually. Telescope is cool. I don't think we really care too much about any of this. Bone arrow, glowstone, holy water pot. Mm, this is not lore relevant. Goodbye for now. See ya. I'll take my smithing stone one. And I will grab the grace. <laughs> he 
You don't have to worry about me as a variable. <laughs> don't worry about it. I'm not worried about anything, to be honest. Uh, I keep thinking I have my shield out. <laughs> okay. So, let's start thinking here. I think we just want to go down the route and get a uh, torrent and maybe a couple levels. And then I think the first thing on our list that we could try to do is go get the dragon and then start getting some dragon communion spells because that would that'd be lovely to be honest i don't get me wrong i love catch flame here but it's really just so mid <laughs> it is not gonna get us there I'm, I'm not terrible at the game, but I'm not that good. Kill God with a level 1 incantation. If you could get an armor drop off of one of these guys too, that'd be sick. Get him out of here. A donkey donkey. Any bags of runes? A bag of runes would be wonderful. Oh, I hear a scarab. Dude, this spear's kind of gas, huh? I never really played with it. And we're already rocking the impaler fit. Where's the scarab? Is she up here? Hello? Hello? Any scalebs? Ha 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 ha. Okay, that's poor shit. I don't even need this. I have all my... Okay, you're... It's a matter of pride now. Okay, dude. I get it. I'm trash. Why are you rubbing it in my face? Spear's good, though. I can't complain. It has a special, um, thank you. It has this. I like to try and, um, test if we have, like, a backstep attack. Because these can be pretty lit in fights. You just press backstep and then go, and it has a unique thing, a unique animation. It's kind of nice. All right. I can take it, man. Damn, that was kind of nice. Okay, give me the map. Do we even care about this? I think we just cheese the map and go get the grace. Hey, buddy. I'm not supposed to be here. Melina? Best girl. Greetings, traveler from beyond the fog. I am Melina. I offer you an accord. Free Honda? Let's go. 
Have you heard of the Finger Maidens? I don't they know how. The two fingers. I should answer that. Offering guidance and aid to the tarnished. Whatever, lady. But you, I am afraid, are maidenless. Such a hater. I can play the role of maiden. Okay. Turning wounds into strength to aid you in your search for the Elden Ring. You need only take me with you. Okay. To the foot of the Erd Tree. She's into feet? Of course I accept you, Melina. Summon me. Big grace. fan, my controller has the most difficult to stick drift. To compensate it, it needs to be held at a 76.3% ah, down to the Z axis to near R3. Ring. Balanced, otherwise my back step becomes a roll forward. It's usually doable, but it makes it a gamble. That sounds miserable. I could not play Elden Ring with a stick drift. To traverse great distances. Oh, Christ. It will summon a spectral steel. Torrent! Named Torrent. Torrent's my favorite character. Torrent has chosen you. Double jump Treat horse. Respect. Okay. Um, I Shall would I like to level. To but let's give a gander to our build. Share them with me. If we can. Um, Your, Your ambitions. Where Where is my... The principles you would follow. Let's give a gander to the build that we're going for to see if we can get any stats that we need early. Okay, so let me swap over to display capture so you can see the build. Okay, so the main kind of things that we're going for here, and I think I am leaning towards the Mesmer uh, Flame dragon incantation build with uh, a dex focus a clean rot dex focus so these are all going to be requiring faith you can see it's the text a bit small faith 23 arcane 15 15 12 24 16 14 okay so it looks like we're gonna cap out here with some faith but i think we're probably all right for now we will be getting a dragon communion spell soon the drake knight set it's just armor so we don't need any requirements the clean rot set same deal oh maybe we can head over to the uh impaler's catacombs pretty soon at soon actually to see if there's any mesomer lore in there and then I do want to start running the clean rot spear as soon as possible. So we need 14 faith. Here, am I blocking? I can move it over a touch. We need 14 faith, 16 dex, 16 strength. 14 faith, we're past that already. 16, what did it say? 16 dex and 16 strength. Okay, so we have to level our strength and our dex early, and then the faith should be pretty chill. I mean, vigor is always nice as well, but pff, I'm a professional. I don't get hit. Psych. Um, let me check my spear, because I think... Oh, new map! Because I think that I'm actually... Why do I have a golden pickled fowl's foot buff? You see that in the top left? I'm getting extra runes. I think I'm actually going to run this short spear for a little while. It's not a terrible weapon. Um, so we're going to be doing that. And get this damn rag off my head. Alright. Uh, dex and strength are both uh, D scaling. So it doesn't matter which one we go for. I guess we'll just... I guess we'll just level the decks, right? Honestly, who am I kidding? I should really just level the vigor. And then I'll um, dump some upgrades into the spear. Catch those leaves. But 
Bleh. You ever just stand outside when it's snowing and stick your tongue out? Or is that only for me and children? Alright, should we uh, clear this camp just to get the early level? Okay, that's the range of my spell. It's kind of a nice little one too early. I think it's going to fall off in terms of uh, damage pretty soon here. Sword, the long sword. Long, long, longman's long, great, long, great and long, or something. I short circuited, guys, I'm sorry. Um, but the little catch flame into the spear is kind of nice. I've never really given a, a solid profit run. I had one time where I respect into strength and faith, but get wrecked, nerd. And then that one, your shield doesn't protect you. Ha 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 Barbecue skewer. I played in Vaddy's group once. It was so popular that rune buff was on 75%. Wow, that's actually kind of nuts. Barbecue skewer is funny. I'm out here cook <laughs> cooking yakitori. <laughs> Dude, Mesmer was on to something, huh? Mesmer was on to something. <laughs> it's a good build. Fire into spear. I do be impaling. Mesmer the impaler. Give me give me flowers. I love flowers. Um isn't there something nice? Can we cook this dude up? No pun intended, before he blows his trumpet horn. Oh, golden eyes. Get rocked. Is this guy gonna be chill too? Give me the old one too. Bada bing bada boom. Okay, you're not friendly. Um, I think we're probably gonna go with the shield situation here. Here, give me a give me a give me a poke. Dickhead, you're two v wanting me. Okay, rude. All right, catch flame. How about you get set on fire? Oh, I have to go back to the church too. I forgot. Whatever. <laughs> He's cheating. He has a shield. 75% of the time, it was raining gold all day. <laughs> yeah, he's probably old G. OG. A grumpy old man in his 50s with mother issues. I couldn't agree more, to be honest. <laughs> I'm mortal. Alright, give me my runes, and then, uh... Let's go meet Ronnie. Ronnie is actually... Actually, I don't know if she's best girl. I did marry her. So, maybe I shouldn't badmouth my wife. Um. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Just popping my head in. And we got to equip Torrent, too. I forgot. Could you get the fuck off me? Wow. Dude, the range on this is really throwing me for a loop. Barbecue... It's not working now. Barbecue. Skewer. Bada bing bada boom. Okay, and then we have to do... How do I do this again? Get, get, I don't... I'm never going to get stuck, so we remove the memory of grace. And then I like to put Torrent's Whistle on the thing. So it's going to be triangle down, right? Okay. You don't have to worry about what you say you're not engaged yet. I guess that's true. Just in my last life. Torched. Alrighty. And then... Is she gonna show up here? Or, um... America bless you. Triangle down is the way. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. This time.
tiny golden aura is the grace of the earth tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This light once shone in the eyes of your tarnished brethren, but now it is all that guides you. Also, I hear you can see them, can't you? The rays of grace that guide you through your burden. Uh, do I know you? Upon the cliff in Castle Stormvale is a shard bearer, a demigod, who inherited a fragment of the shattered Elden Ring. If the rays of grace signal the castle, then the Elden Ring beckons you. As an ally by pact, I pray that you are fit to face the challenge presented by the ring. Okay. Do we have another Can level cooking? Let my hand rest share them with me. She's always trying to hold my hand. Your thoughts. Let's go more vigor again. Ambitions. The principle. And then Do I have to fast travel here and then it'll turn night or what did I miss it? What what's the deal? There she is. Hi, Ronnie. A pleasure to meet thee, Tarnished. I am the witch, Rena. I'd heard tell of a Tarnished hurtling about atop a spectral steed. And upon looking into the matter... That's me. The talk, I surmise, is of thee. Mm -hmm, Thou art mm -hmm. possessed of the power, no? To call forth a spectral steed named Torrent. Mm -hmm. I can call the spectral steed. As I had hoped, I was entrusted this for thee. By Torrent's former master. Mikola. Cool, thanks. It is a bell of calling forth spirits. Summon them with it. From ash and return to the earth tree. Okay, whatever, bye. The spirits will obey thine command, but... <laughs> give mine intrusion tarnished. I doubt we shall again meet. Okay, likely Don't story. Aim. Learn well the lands between. For the tarnished tire of obeisance to the two fingers. Oh, you're finally awake, sleepyhead. Okay. What do we want to do, right? So we got to go to Agil. I mean, we could give it a shot. See if we can pop out a dragon heart real quick. I'm sure we'll be able to handle it, right? Surely. Surely. Ain't no way I die. We're off to fight a dragon. What the heck? You guys are freaking weird, man. Is that Blythe? Blade? Blythe? I just... Bruh. Do you hear this guy? Do you hear him? What is he doing out there? Hello? Are you fucking good? <laughs> Bro, this sounds like the Germa farting and screaming compilation. hydrate and get my charger brb i'll see you then <laughs> this is crazy <laughs> do you hear this what is going on oh i thought we could go in there we can't they wild <laughs> uh yeah That was nuts. Alright, let me go get my 17 runes. And uh, now we can try and fight the dragon. Surely. 
since um, I was defeated by a hole in the ground, I'll be able to beat the dragon. At least we did get two smithing stones. Sh sh smithing stones. All right, where is this loser? Is there anything good in these ruins, or is this the one that like teleports me to the middle of nowhere? Hello? All right, well. I'm gonna hide behind this wall and call my dogs for backup. Go get him, boys. Oh, I keep thinking I have the shield out. Herba. What is this dog even doing, man? Out here looking like he's made out of moss. These dogs are so weird. The ones that are around here. All right, who's out here all groaning? Are you cool? The dog is definitely not cool. Hello? Oh, sorry guys. Uh, sorry. I didn't mean it. I would have let you live, but my dogs were just hungry, I guess. Poke. Smoldering butterfly. Let's go. Nah, you gotta go. Oh! The audacity of some people. Alright, anything else in the vicinity? Words are hard. <laughs> I agree. Bonk. Damn, hit him with the one, too. Mushroom. Okay. Um. What's down here? Is this the rat room? Is this pumpkin head or... No, this isn't pumpkin head. Okay. That's horse shit. Dude, this is cheating. Summons in this game are cheating, bro. Just go cook them up, bro. Little lunchy. Lunchy, lunchy. I, I got the finishing blow, so that means that I'm good at the game. This is that uh, wizard here. Oh, no. This is... Is this Celia Crystal Tunnel? Oh, get me out! You're a bastard. <laughs> That's horseshit. Well, the rat was kind of looking like horseshit. Yeah. <laughs> Poor little dudes. Nice evade. Yeah, I'm not doing that, bro. Maybe later we can use it to skip over to Kaled. But I'm, I'm straight. All right, there's got to be a closer grace around here, right? Um, or does it only appear after you kill the dragon? Who is, who is talking to me? Do you hear that guy? St. Trina's Lily? Trina's Lily! Let's go! Yeah, pass on that. For real. Golden Rune 2! Oh my god. Rat! Bonk! Get him, dogs! Did you drop anything, Mr. Rat? 
other than your consciousness. Hello? I'm terrible at jump rope. Oh my god, dude. They're, they just don't stop. Sick them. It's actually the barbecue build. It's so funny, dude. <laughs> I'm out here cooking them and poking them. Alright, we got crabs over there. I'd rather not fight a crab. I swear there's a grace around here. Again, I haven't played the game in like a year. So I forget the specifics. But there's definitely a grace like right here. But maybe it's only after we get the dragon. Hello? I said... Alright, I think she spawns over here, right? Cook him up! Oh my god, this little fly. Nope. I hate these things, man. Oh, there the dragon is. Yeah, uh oh. Alright, go for the ankles. Ow. Alright, gotta watch the mouth. You hit the ankles, but you gotta watch the mouth. Huh. It do be biting. That was not a good attempt. Surely we'll get him next time. Dragonfly thought he was going to step in for a gill. <laughs> Is a dragonfly kind of similar? All right, wolfies. And then something tells me that using fire incantations against the dragon is not going to do uh, a great job. Okay. Oh, I'd love to get my runes too. I know it's like not that much, but we're so early that it actually matters. You're telling me if I poke the wing, it doesn't do anything? Please don't. That's so rude. Dragon? Well, my wolves are gone, so that's a little unfortunate. Oh, you mother. Okay. Oh, you're kidding me, huh? That really double does me. We got it, we got it. Agil's easy, right? Right? Copium? <laughs> I just want the dragon incantation so bad. Like, just give me the dragon communion spells. We got this, we got this. Oh. Oh my god, I forgot that the... The steed's on the bottom, the wolves are on top. I'm cooked. Literally. <laughs> okay, there was a there was a it was a miscommunication that time. The dragonfly was spoiled as a kid, grew up thinking he was a dragon that could fly. Whoa. <laughs> Do you think that's why they call him dragonflies? All right, you little shit. Well, at least we don't have the uh, burden of looking at runes. Just go for the ankles. Okay, that's so rude. Oh, 
I would love it if any of these attacks would connect. Crazy. Hello? It's like you want to keep rubbing it in my face that you can fly. The fire is the only thing that really scares me here with my friend, Agil. Oh, the dragonfly. The backup, dude. Do your spin. Do your little spinny spin. Okay, I literally called it. Incredibly rude. Freed up my- Oh, I was alive, dude? That's why you always play until they blow the whistle. <laughs> Freed up my other two neurons. That's why you play until the whistle blows. Oh my gosh. That's embarrassing. Whoopsie doopsie daisies. Come on. Can't you just spare one little dragon heart? I guess we could go unlock the Dragon Communion Altar first as well. Okay. Yeah. Bruh. Breathe your fire. Talk your shit, king. Are you gonna spin on me? There you go. Okay. And then you're jumping? Oh, not the flames! Oh my goodness. Alright, we're going to the Dragon Communion place first. <laughs> the whistle reference sent me. <laughs> Where is this thing, huh? It's right here, no? So we gotta go down and around. I believe this is the way to the Dragon Communion place. Right? We gotta get down onto the beach. Which way do we go? It's just right over there now. And then after we get down the slope, we have to go into a cave, if I recall correctly. Um, and then after we beat that little cave dungeon thingy, um, this we should survive this, yeah? Is that a penguin? Since when are there penguins? What the hell? Um, I don't know. I don't want to be too, uh, presumptuous here. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but we have to start thinking what the first Dragon Communion spell we're going to go for is. We already have one flame spell. Okay, you're so rude. Come on, buddy. Oh, 2v1. Ridiculous. Did you see how close Torrent was looking like he ran up? How close Torrent was looking like he ran up 
the burnt tree to dodge. I did not notice it. If I'm being completely honest. What am I feeling? Is the question. I don't know. I think the... Uh, we, the, we actually have to check. Depending on how quickly we can get the dragon heart. Isn't it right around here? Um, depending on how quickly we can get the dragon heart. We might actually be capped by faith. You know what I mean? We're not going to have enough faith to... Um, am I going completely the wrong direction? I swear it's on this coast somewhere. But I don't know exactly where. Oh, are we going to try and get this little dude? I hate these things. Come on. Alright, we'll, we'll wait for you on the other side. Ah, uh, God. Sorry, I need to focus. All my brain power goes into focus. Oh, you bitch! <laughs> I'm leaving. I don't care. Um, but we might be hard capped by faith. Where some of the dragon communion spells need like 26 or something. Um, faith. So we might have to just take one that doesn't really, really matter first. And then uh, we want to go get Grail. Okay, rude. Because he just gives us free hearts. Are you serious? Come on. Oh, played. Um, yeah. That might be a good strat, too, honestly, going to get Grail. But I don't have anything that bleeds, and I'm honestly just not going to stand there for 75 minutes hitting a dragon that's dead. Like... I understand we have the goal of doing the cosplay build here, but <laughs> it's not that serious, man. We can just, we can actually just have fun too. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. All right, follow the coast. There is, there's a cave here. I promise. I promise you, there's a cave. Bam, 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 bam. And it's right. What is going on? You see the light change like that? What just happened? It's got to be like right here. Surely. If it's right in front of the dragon communion place, I'm going to be embarrassed that I didn't think of that. Wait, 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 what? Where'd I go? Am I dead? Okay, I'm alive. Whew. Organic run. Uh, you can just walk away. I've spent 75 minutes trying to beat that scarab. Yeah, it's not worth my, my time. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is this it? Am I misremembering? No, it's gotta be right here, right? Merchant! What's this guy's name? What do you need? I don't want any trouble. Okay, I'll be nice to you. Neutralizing boluses. I don't think I care. Smithing stone one is kind of nice. I mean, we should upgrade this spear. I think it's probably probably a smart move. I think we're going to be chilling on the, the normal spear until we um, until we get the clean rot spear and Caleb. Because I think that's about the closest... Um, that's the closest we can come to getting Mesimer's spear. I think is the clean rot spear. It looks pretty similar. There was actually a um, a figure, like a figurine of the clean rot knight, and or not. There's a figure of Mesimer released, and it looks pretty similar to the clean rot knight, which is the reason why I want to incorporate some of the clean rot set into this uh, build. Dude, where's the goddamn cave? I'm losing it here. It's just around the corner, surely. Did I pass it? Where's the cave? <laughs> oh, it was calculated. I meant to come here for the golden fowl pickled, pickle fowl, golden pickles. <laughs> Whoa.
Words are hard. <laughs> are you susceptible to flame? I always get baited by the range on this thing. You're rude. Okay. It's so close. <laughs> it's a learning curve, okay, guys? Don't judge me. I'm the Elden Lord. I don't know that guy's name, but my to-do list includes to read up on the history of St. Nicholas IRL to see if Kale has hidden details. He does be looking... He do be looking like Santa Claus. Okay, surely... Coastal cave. Am I stupid? Did I pass the cave like seven times and it just... It was just there. <laughs> this literally says coastal cave on my map. And I'm out here looking like a damn fool. Is this safe here? Yeah, this this is this safe. No, no, no. We gotta go one over. Then we go bink. Bonk. I didn't catch it, but I think so. Oh no, is this too far? I'm dead. I'm alive. Okay. What is that? A little tumbleweed. Beautiful. All right, you're, uh, you're entirely too tanky for me. Now I'm in combat, you're kidding me. Get me out of combat. Coastal cave. Alright, should just be around here. Right? Surely, surely. That looks cavey. Coastal cave! Fog! Bum, bum, bum. Grace! My friend Grace is here. Lovely. Oh, Melania. Melania? Melina? Too many M names. Now it's Mesmer in there, too. Me. I'm searching for my purpose. Given to me by my mother inside the earth tree. Okay. Long ago. Mommy's girl. The reason that I yet live. Burned and bodiless. Burned and bodiless. There is something for which I must apologize. I've acted the finger maiden, yet can offer no guidance. You're, you're good, I Melina. No maiden. My purpose. Melina, just chill. It's not that serious. Was long ago lost. Okay. Well. You seem pleasant to me. All right, is this the one I I get dunkied here, right? I'm about to get rocked. Oh, you little shitter! Take that. Get barbecued, nerd. I should have really came in here with a. Uh... Where are you? Okay. With a torch. Halig resident says nothing. <laughs> Melina, did someone say something? Me? <laughs> uh, is this the one with the rune bear at the bottom? Am I gonna die? Right, where's... I, this cave moss has given me flashbacks. I swear that there's a trap door in here somewhere. Ah! They're everywhere. You backstep me, I backstep you. Glass shard. Okay, more of you little guys. Hit him with the bing bong. Oh, that, that was not. Hit him, bing bong? Hit him with the bing bong? Oh, 
Oh, you bleed me? I bleed you. Nerd. That's a big old guy, huh? Bigger than the rest of them. Foot for hands, looking... Read message. Eh, that's okay. I'm sure it's not interesting or valuable or gonna tell me about a secret or something. What do you have here? Smithing stone for me? Octopus ovary. Okay, and then now this is the double the double summoners? Alright, I'll summon you. Old Knight Istvan. Let's get him. Semi-human, not demi-human. Oh, I get it. Oh, I'm broke. Alright, come on. Alright, I'm gonna go... Uh, I'll just chill here, I guess. Like... It seems like you guys got it. Elden Ring is a hard game. I'll get the ads. <laughs> There's actually like 14 different uh, NPCs fighting each other. I'm just watching. Alright, no. Istvan's actually in trouble. We gotta help him. What is happening, dude? The mosh pit. <laughs> Elden Ring. Hard game, huh? Rude. I say as I get rocked. Get him out of here. Thanks, Dispawn. And I get the tailoring tools. We can go give it to that little guy. I love him. And a sewing needle. Pog. Alright, was there anything good in here? Did we get anything other than just a dragon communion place? This is the way, right? Surely there's no loot. Rip Bozo. Absolutely dunked on. Get out of my face! I can't believe you. I'm out of magics. Okay, you're actually so rude. I can't believe it. I come into your house as a guest, and you hit me? Unreal. Some people. Wow, what a nice place we have here. The Wagon Communion. My communion! Surely nothing bad's gonna happen here, right guys? Right? It's just a nice peaceful area. <laughs> Dude, I'm ragged. <laughs> I look like someone put me in the blender. Okay, well, a lovely little sight of grace. Doesn't this look like such a nice spot? I want to just have a picnic. Put all this Elden Lord business behind us. A widow heal. Okay, um, before we level here, I think it's best to see what kind of dragon communion spells we can get at this place and see what we need to level. So we need to level arcane 
for all of them, actually. So it might be beneficial for us to start doing that. We're at 10 arcane. We need 12, 13, 16. Dragon Claw is quite good. Um, Dragon Fire is on brand for us, trying to do the Mesmer, the Impaler, Flame build. So I think that's probably the best bet. We're going to get two more Arcane and then try and get a Dragon Heart. Um, I think that is probably our, our plan. My plan is looking like we're going to rest here, get two Arcane. I think we'll have enough points, right? We should. And then we're going to go farm up enough runes to buy out um, our merchant here of his smithing stones. Level up our spear and then go kill a Gil for our first dragon heart. Come back, get the dragon flame, whatever the fuck. Um, and then win the game. Uh, become Elden Lord. Uh, and complete our build. It's just a few simple steps. Draw the rest of the owl. Um, how much are these misbegotten? What the hell are you? How much are you giving me here? I think it's 200 per. Um... Oh, the impaling thrust is kind of nutty too. We do be impaling. Glowstone? Come on, buddy. Okay, this is OP. Um, how many souls or runes or whatever they're called in this game? Oh, wrong way. Wrong way. We gotta head over towards our buddy Nick. What's his name? Nicholas? <laughs> Santa Claus? Yellow Santa Claus? Or is he brown Santa Claus? Black Santa, Pog. You again? I don't want any. I'm not giving you trouble, man. Stop being so paranoid. This guy is not Kale. They're not all Kale, right? Kale is at the um, the other one. Yeah, we need six Honda. Can we sell something here? I guess. We'll sell a golden rune too. I don't want to have to come back here. Just give me all your smithing stones. We're gonna to have to get more to actually upgrade. But um, done. Well, be on your way then. Okay, bye. Like, I don't know why you're being difficult. <laughs> the Saint Santa Claus threw me off. Yeah, run his pockets, bro. Turn him out. Well, that's not what that means. Okay, how much do we need to um, strengthen this thing? 260 for one. So we're looking at about 600 something. We can get that pretty quick. Maybe we just go to uh, Gate Town or whatever it's called. Gate Front. We'll farm these guys. The classic. Hit the classic on them. Come on, buddy. Step right up, step right up. The neighborhood barbecue is back in town. Oh, you, huh? No shot you're getting to do that. Ain't no way. Okay, l release the hounds. Release the hounds. We're not playing fair here. I'm just trying to milk you. Milk you dry of all your runes. I think it might be worth grabbing another Cerulean Flask if we're going to be spamming this Impaling Thrust. Hello! A tasty little scrumptious snack over here. Oh, the audacity. That's what I thought. You really don't want to drop any armor pieces? How many of these guys have I killed? Free two piece at the cookout. Bing bonk. Oh, I, I didn't get the um, whetstone from the little ruins dungeon here either. Oh. 
The audacity. No one wants to drop any armor? This is crazy. Excuse me, sir. Some people have no concept of personal space. All right, we should be, oh, excuse me, oh, oh, okay. I'm trying to do something. I'm doing math over here, seeing if I have enough money to strengthen my armament. It just runs up on me. We'll go to the stake. Give me my money. Square up, bro. Where's my money? Okay, that sucks. I'm out of money! I'm out of magic! I'm out of blue stuff! He's not a fan, huh? Welcome to the barbecue? Okay, you're a dickhead. We definitely got some rust on the sticks. <laughs> the fact that I've died 17 times to the one big knight in a gil is kind of crazy. There's growing pains. Okay, get me in, get me out. Get me out of here! Oh my god. <laughs> It's actually a mechanic's diff, dude. <laughs> it's actually a mechanic's diff. I'm out here with fat fingers. I'll take it some kukri. It's crazy I'm losing to the map, Micro. Just get off the horse. Jesus Christ. I guess this thing will go away once I claim it. Okay. Now get get out of here, marker. Right? They disappear. Should disappear at least. And then we go strength and armament. Give him the old one, two. Short store, short short spear. Plus two. And now let's go try a Gil again, right? Surely we gotta be good here. I just want one Dragon Heart. Is that too much to ask? Is that too much to ask? I just want the heart of a dragon. Okay. Okay. We are cooking. We are cooking something. Maybe it's the barbecue that I'm smelling. But we are cooking. Oh, it's Tree Sentinel? Hey, just passing through. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. All right, where's this damn dragon? Here he is. Bing, bing, bing. All right, and then surely these upgrades will put me over the edge. Okay, dickhead. Rip wolves.
can't get me with that one. Haha, <laughs> nerd. Dude. Please leave me alone. I'm cooked. I'm alive. Surely this doesn't kill me, right? Just give him a little space. Just need some space. Jump rope, I told you. All right, we're getting the idea back here. I say as I immediately die, right? How does that hit me, man? Just give him some space. I just don't want to get fire breathed on. Oh. Okay. Get the hell away from me. Okay, imagine. Surely I won't die here. Just no fire, please. Okay, dude. Dickhead. Just out here poking him with a little, oh my god, please, just don't burn me alive, and I'm gonna cook you. The barbecuer becomes the barbecuee. Alright, hold on, give him space. Why am I trying different things? Just light attack him. Jump rope, I love jump rope. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm choking! Shut up. Okay, thank you. One time. Lurking. Enjoy the stream. Sanguine. Sanguine. Nice to see you. You made an, an appearance in my YouTube video. I told you. This stuff is easy, man. Easy peasy. Dragonheart. That's the first piece to our build. Okay, so we got a Dragonheart that we got to head over to the Church of Gragon Gragon Kamumum. Gragon Kamumum. Alright, let's head on over. Bum ba ba bum. You made an appearance? What? Yeah. I I was talking about you. <laughs> uh. 
Um, and then we get our dragon fire spell. Yay, yay. We have dragon. Oh, gross, dude. Did I eat the heart? You're a freaky little lady. Just got in more easily confused uh, than usually apparent. Usual, apparently. You know, I think you're in good company here. We have been typoing verbally <laughs> all day. <laughs> I have short circuited at least half a dozen times. Jump rope was clean. I'm keeping it. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right, memorize spells. Healing is for losers that get hit. So that's going in the trash. Um, dragon fire is for chads who eat the hearts of dragons. So I'm going to do that one instead. Oh, oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. Should we go to Margaret? <laughs> Words are hard. <laughs> Oh, God. Margaret? Margaret time? Words are very hard. I'm not great at them. I dropped my little towel, dude. My towel. Towelly. Monday, Monday, Monday. Did you do anything for the eclipse, Sanguine? Did you see it? Did you get to see it in your neck of the woods? I don't know where you're located. We had a pretty good outing. I went out with my family. We went to the park and, and watched. Okay, let me... Should I... Do I... Where I... Okay. Let's check the build. It was definitely a Monday. The eclipse was cool. The whole shop stopped working to go see. I think that's important, right? We're not going to have another one for 20 years. We could go... Okay, so we got two two things cooking here. We could go to the Impaler's Catacombs, which uh, is theorized could have something to do with the DLC, since it's about Mesmer the Impaler. Or we could go try to find some Clean Rot Knights to decimate and Caled, and hope we get a lucky drop. The Drake Knights set, we're not going to be able to get till Faramazula, which I don't even know if I want to do, because that means that we have to torch Melina, and um, I don't know if I want to do that for DLC lore implications. We could also try and find another dragon. We do be needing dragons. Let's see what other dragons there are, if I'm missing anything. All right, Freezing Fog, the Kayla Dragon, Agil, Grail, the Glintstone Dragon by Raya Lucaria. Ooh, what is this? Cathedral of Manus Seelys? Need to level grind. I'm gonna lurk so I don't get lore spoilers, since you know your shit. <laughs> and because I need to level grind myself. Do your thing. Pop off, queen. I think it's uh, so great too <laughs> that you're going and grinding the level. I'm excited. When we're when the DLC comes out, we'll all be on the uh, the same same footing. You know what I mean? It was close to here, us uh, here around Toronto. I'll have to show it to you sometime. No complaints. Yeah. Um, oh, this is the uh, Ronnie quest line dragon. Grail. Theodorix. Albanorax Rise. Where's Theodorix? I don't know this guy. Great Worm Theodorix. Oh, this dick. I do know this guy. He's over by Comet Azure, I believe, if I recall correctly. Um, Markar, Magma Worm, Volcano Manor, Mount Gelmir, Gale Tunnel, and Kaled. 
We're kind of cooked on it. We just need to level, I think. Let's let's head over to Kaelin. Or we could do Margit. Maybe we give Margit a shot. That or the Impaler's Catacombs are really what I'm trying to cook up here. Mm, Limgrave. Yeah, let's go to Margit. Might as well just go get the uh, gate front over here. Right? Right? Surely. Alright. Giant time. Dude, this was so crazy when it first happened. Okay, dude, I get it. I'm not focused on you. I'm not giving you the respect you deserve. Okay. Incredibly rude. Actually, insane. Some people. You know, we're just testing the waters. I really should be leveling up. 5,000 runes at this stage in the game is um, non-negligible. I think is one way to put it. Bum, 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 bum. All right, give me the give me the wolfies. All right, go ahead, shoot me. What are you gonna do? Stab me? Serpentine, serpentine. All right. I'm not just gonna cheese it and run past, which you totally can do. Okay, douche. Oh, maybe we should um, do the thing. You know, that whole dragon thing that we spent all that money on? It's not an insignificant amount. And yet I keep fighting instead of going to the grace that's literally right next to me. Oh, new armor, Pog. I fucking hate this tattered tablecloth that I'm cooking up over here. Something, just give me something else. Golden Seed! I forgot. And then the Grace is right up here, you no? Know, at the Artist's Shack. If I recall correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah! Oh. Oh. So rude. I literally have not moved like I keep saying. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying the stream. <laughs> Let's frame it like that. <laughs> oh, goodness. Stormhill? Is this the right one? Can I just get my runes? I'm gonna lose it, dude. Jump? Jump. Jump. Pog. Stone Sword Key. Okay. Beautiful. Okay, let's talk to our friend Everyone's here. What's her name? Been grafted. Everyone who came with me. They crossed the sea for me. They fought for me. Okay, Helen of Troy looking. Only to have their arms taken. I think the eclipse took a little something on its way past. <laughs> I feel you. To the spider. Did you know if you're grafted by the spider, you become a chrysalid? Cool. I always wanted to be a chrysalid when I grew up. Thanks for the emote, lady. Castle. Jellyfish, please. Jellyfish. Oh, you've come to be one with the spider. Yes. 
spider? Well, that makes us two peas in a pod. But I don't have your courage. It's scary, you know, having your arms cut off. Or legs. Or your head. I do agree with you there. Everyone else, but I'm just too scared. I'm nothing but a craven. Don't be so hard on yourself. She's great. She upgrades all my summons. Oh, I know. Can you take this little one along with you? I'd be honored. The poor thing deserves someone braver than myself. And the spirits look rather fondly upon you. Oh. I'd be glad of your company, I think. Oh. Um, Don't mind if I do. Okay, let's, um... I think the play here is we want to go summons on each side, right? One summon on the right, one summon on the left. I do really like the jellyfish, actually. Um, I feel like it's very undervalued. I don't know, maybe it's appropriately valued in that people do like it. But just the ability to put poison on a boss is so hype. Flasks! More flasks, let's go. Um, allocate flasks. I think I'll stick with four and two. And then we want to level here. Let's go for some... We have a lot of levels. We want to go one vigor, two vigor. I think let's do that. Let's go two vigor, one strength, one dex. Now we're cooking up a little. And then let's go farm Margaret. This one I am just gonna cheese past um, and go get the Grace because it's way easier to kill these dudes from the other side of the Grace over here. Excuse me. Bam bomb. Haha. See you later, loser. You'll never catch me. Do you guys even come in here? Oh, you do. Dragon fire. Okay, dude, I get it. We're not friends. Like, but you don't have to be mean to me. Alright, the timing worked out. I can't believe none of these dudes have dropped armor. No doubt it's not super inclusive, so you don't worry about being too safe. But she's very cute. Oh, you're talking about uh, Greta Thunberg or whatever her name is? Um... The, the spirit calling lady. Do we have another level cooking? We're so close. Let's just farm it out before we die seven times. Beep, 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 beep. Let me just sneak up here. Oh, I didn't even get this stab. The runes are... Uh, I meant the jelly. Oh, oh. <laughs> that makes more sense. <laughs> okay. Mm -mm. I think we do want one more vigor. Just for Margaret here. Jelly Belly. Margaret! Pog! In search of the Elden Ring. Emboldened by the flame of ambition. Be Margaret the Fell. 
Margaret fell off. Am I right, guys? Don't do this. Alright, we're feeling it out. We're feeling it. It's been a little while since I've done the Margaret fight. Don't worry, we'll get there, we'll get there. Easy peasy. This fight's for babies. Surely. That was gold clapback. <laughs> Plus, he's bald, man. Oh, too soon. I just want to play, uh... Trade aggro with him until he gets poisoned. Oh, I do that too soon every time. Oh my god. I'm cooking him though, dude. As soon as I get that, it's over. For Margaret. Margaret did fell off. Jesus. Your audio's a little off. Sounds synthetic or has reverb. Check for recording quality. Okay, bet, bet, bet. Here, let me check the Twitch stream. Just to see what's going on here. Hello, hello. Jesus. Your audio's a little off. Sounds synthetic or has reverb. What, you mean my voice or the, the game? Because that would blow. I do be recording. The game. Maybe we just hit him with a quick restart. Oh my god, was I on display capture? I think that was the problem. I was on display capture since I had the, um, the build up and I didn't switch back to game capture. BRB, no problem. Initializing. Sorry, guys. Sorry about that. Should be right back. I don't know what's up. It's The stutter is kind of went away, or maybe I just got used to it. And the audio being off kind of sucks too. Bandanimco, Pog. Jesus Christ, it's loud. Alright, game audio. Let's hope that that's good, huh? Okay, we're back. Alright, let's get... Oh, wait, sorry, I gotta pull up chat again. My bad. Silly Billy. Okay. All right, Hudson, if you're here, would you mind just letting me know if that's any better? Um, I think it should be fixed. 
Are we gonna do Rogier? Um, no, let's just go for it, man. We can cook this dude. Margaret fell off. We actually just cook him. Oh, that was close. I almost fell off the edge. Plus your balls. Ugly. Why aren't you? Don't you want to fight my jellyfish? <laughs> Just kidding, you want to fight me. <laughs> oh, he's poisoned! That sucked. Oh, you, you're kidding me. You're kidding me! Give me my 16 runes. Get poked. Oh, okay. Don't you want to just do phase two already? There you go. Wow, dude, did you see the lag? <laughs> Copium, right? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. He's done. Oh my god. All right, Margaret. Throw your little knives or whatever. You see this lag though, right? Wow, you, he hit me on the backstroke. The fact that I can fall off and he can't fall off is messed up. I'm not putting these foolish ambitions to rest. Oh my god. I wish that the game didn't bind my mouse <laughs> automatically. I try to move my mouse and then it just like spins my character. Misclick, misclick. What level am I? Oh. Forgive me. It gotta be. No, I'm probably closer to 15. You something like that. To see whether or not Grace truly does guide you. Grace guides me, Melina. Whether you are fit to face the challenge that entails. It I can't seems believe it. My worries were unfounded. They Tyrant weren't. Had your measure from the very start, whereas I merely pretended. <sighs> there is but one other thing. I can do to offer you guidance. Finger? I can take you to the round table hole. Oh. Gathering place of tarnished champions. Guided by grace. Okay. No thanks. Sixteen, yeah. We started at seven, so we've gotten nine levels since the start of the game. All right, let's cook him up. Margaret. Dude, the lag is so sad. Wow, you ranged me. You actually outranged me there. Oh! I'm actually cringing so hard at my spacing. I'm out here letting my jelly die. 
And then he's gonna spin on me now. Come on. Then he spins back on the jelly. I need you to get poisoned. Easy peasy. Alright, phase two me. You're seriously not at phase two? Okay. Thou art of passing skill. Warrior blood. Not poisoned. If you knock me off. He did the spin move on me. Phase two me. I play that so bad though. This boss is actually so doable. It's like free. I swear to God, Mar gets easier than a Or at least more satisfying. Like it's an actual fight, you know what I mean? It's not just like jump rope and scratch my ankles. Alright, come over here. Bro, chill. What in the fuck? Why would I roll there? At least he's poisoned now. Thought you want to fight the jellyfish? Behold my communion! Oh. That's unfortunate. I thought I was gonna stagger him, dude. Where's the poise break, dude? Where's the poise break? Thank you. Oh, I missed. Easiest money of my life. All right, give me this. Impaling thrust is so good. Uh, close one. Oh no, that's not a crimson flask. It's a cerulean flask. I'm gonna lose it with this guy.
Oh my god, just swing the hammer, my man. Jellyfish, Rage. Easiest money of my life. Let's go Jelly! Up top. Broke ass bitch. Margaret the fell off. Let's go! Okay, dude, I don't have any quarters on me. I mean, like, what? He's asking for change out here? Desperate much? Okay. Uh, let me check the build again. Because we are trying to be... We do have a singular goal here of cosplaying. We only want to play Fashion Souls. Okay, so Dragon Communion spells. We got the Dragon Fire. We mainly want to focus on these Flame ones. So the Fell... Or the, the Faith going up could be nice at some point, but... I think we're getting close to being able to go farm out this clean rot spear, which we need 16 and 16, 16 strength, 16 dex, 14 faith. So I think we just want to go strength um, dex for now on our levels. Strumpf? Do I care which one goes first or do I just want to level them evenly or... Yeah, let's just get them both to 14. I think the spear scales off of each equally, at least for the moment. Very well. So it's fine to just the level them both at the same time. For but a moment. It probably it would probably be worthwhile to go pick up the bell bearings at the cave. Um, just so I'm, if I remember correctly, the clean rot spear is not somber. So we can level up our current spear, and we can level up the clean rot spear once we get it. Hello. Oh, I see you've just arrived. Welcome to the Round Table Hold. I'm Corin, a man of the cloth. When you pull up to the I Round Table Hold, and some bitch is already wearing your outfit. The strength granted us by the two fingers, and explore the secrets of the Golden Order, so that one day. If a tarnished of the round table hold should become Elden Lord, I might counsel them. Yeah, that's very presumptuous. It its proper form, writing rule over men. By the way, do you still see it? The guidance of grace. But yeah, I see it, bro. You do. I'm All destined to be the Elden Lord. Most tarnished are blind to it these days. Well, you got you, <laughs> of a rare breed. you got a rag on your eyes, bro. What do you say? Care to learn an incantation of the two fingers? Um, I don't think we need any of this for now. Catch flame could be nice. Flame sling. Well, we have catch flame. Flame sling would be nice, I guess. May the golden order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Golden order. Um. I gotta change my outfit now. Like, I'm not trying to be wearing the same thing as him. You know what I mean? Like, he's biting my style. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. We don't have any other spears, right? We just have the one. And that's fine for now. I'm not wearing this. I know that this gives me better armor if I wear it, but I'm not putting a blindfold on, man. I think I'm stupid. Dialos, yeah, go pet a jar. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dialos, you're actually great. The tale of House Hoslo is told in blood. Um, yaddy yaddy yaddy. You're new from no matter how you're up. Let's get smithing. We have no stones. Where is... Oh my god, you scared me. I mean, we're here now, right? I don't really need to be here. I think we should go back to the Dragonburnt Ruins. 
and get teleported to that that place. You know what I mean? The um the mine. Did I not get the grace here after we killed a gil? I don't want cave of knowledge first step. Let's um I swear there's a grace, no? After you kill the dragon there's a grace there. Am I crazy? A gil. I miss a gil, man. I wish we could get another dragon heart for a, a communion spell. How am I supposed to cosplay Mesmer with only one dragon communion spell? It's actually like tragic. I low-key don't know. I swear there's a grace here. If there's no grace here, I, I'm actually going to believe in the Mandela effect again. There has to be. Like there is. I'm not taking no for an answer. I know that there's a grace here. In this lake. What are you guys doing here? This is a weird party. Alright, well, go get him, boys. I need a blindfold, personally. Fair enough. There's a great... I, I can't believe that there's no grace here. I will not accept this. It just... I don't want to be involved with all that. You know, it just seems annoying. Don't poison me, please. Alright, let's farm him out. Come on. Don't poison me. Oh my gosh. You're... Oh my... I can't believe you've done this. Dickhead. Why are there so many of them? Now it's personal, man. You're all poisoning me. I'm taking you all out. Let's go. I don't even care about the poison anymore, so why should I? I'm out of FP. Think. Bonk. Okay. Are you serious? There's another one. That's actually crazy. Are you a real person? It's a leaf. They got I did this all for a leaf. Unreal. <laughs> oh my god. There has got to be a, a, rune, a thing over there. I'm checking. I'm going to check. <laughs> Shit, my controller. Agil Lake South Ruins. Right? Bro, there's no grace. This is actually like... <laughs> this is actually crazy. There's no grace over there. I just checked the interactive map. Oh, I dropped my controller. 
I can't believe it. I actually am in denial. I think they've updated the game. It was a hot fix. But the blindfold was kind of real. I have some blurry vision. Well, you're not going to be, you're not going to have any vision with the blindfold. I don't know what to tell you. I don't remember how many runes I had. So I'm just going to pick them up anyway. Even though it's probably not necessary. These assholes. Where, where is it? You're telling me it's really, are, are you kidding me? We have to do this shit again? You know what I'm gonna do? Maybe this will help. I'm the dragon now. This was a lot easier. Cooked them. I literally cooked them. The barbecue is back in session, boys. Alright, and now let's get teleported into, um... A nightmare. Dragon burnt ruins. Yada yada yada. Whatever. Where's the where's the tunnel? Could you find fellows point me in the direction of the uh, the basement? Yeah, it's there's a um, there's a stake of America. Is that? Oh, what's in there? Uh, you know, my loot hunger. Stone sword key. That's nice, I guess. Dude, where, where is the, where's the basement? Okay, cool. There she is. Cool. Get me out of here. You're, you really can still hit me while I'm in the smoke? I can't do anything. Okie dokie. If I recall correctly, this should be a area in Kalid, right? Celia Crystal Tunnel. Gravity Stone. Alright, we just run, no? Get me out! 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 Oh my god. Got hit and trapped, right? It's not fair. I think it's pretty chill to just leave. Like, we'll be okay now. Get me out! Get me out! Okay, see, if I didn't get hit by the rats, I would have just survived the first time. Cerulean! Cool, 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 cool. Then we can just leave, if I recall correctly. We're happy. I just want to check something real quick while I have the uh, chance. I have been noticing that the gameplay is stuttering a touch. So I want to pull up the performance manager or whatever to see what the problem is. Okay, a Firefox is eating a lot of memory. Which is uh, fair enough, I guess. 
Let me close all the extra tabs I have. This should help. Okay. Cool. And then we can close Discord too. I don't need that open. All right, great. That might help the performance a bit. Looks a little better. Okay, speaking of Firefox though, um, let's open up the build again. I wanna see where these, uh, where the clean rot guys are. All right, they're all in like the Aeonian Lake, or the, the Lake of Rot over here. So let's try and get the, uh, the map. We have to go north for that. How can we even do this? Can we get to the rest of Kaelid from here? This looks like quite the wall, to be honest with you. Is this the swamp? Oh, these are marionettes, huh? All right, well rude I got cooked dude well at least we have a grace in Kaelin <laughs> I don't know if that's the way we want to go though I think if I recall correctly we're actually a kind of not the right way over there we could just go you're telling me I can't TP out of here the hell? Stormhill Shack. You're not too far, but Torrent might get it done. History. Rusto, hello, welcome to the chat. First message. We are going to try, and our current goal is to get to Kaled to try and collect pieces of our cosplay build. We're gonna try and cosplay Mesmer from the DLC and try and get him ready to play the DLC with. Um, so we're getting all the Dragon Communion spells and we're getting the Clean Rot Knight set and the Clean Rot Knight Spear until we can get the Drake set or the Drake Knight set. Um, and then, what else is part of the build? Yeah, mainly the spear, the armor, the spells. And then we'll see what else we can pick up on the way. I will definitely take this grace. But yeah, I'm well, we're going well today. How about yourself? Okay. Okay, we're just mainly trying to go farm out some clean rotten knights, and I think we should be Am I going the right way? Oh goodness me Some people Do I have pants on? Oh glowing eyes pog. Can I kill him? Just uh I have no ranged This is why I need uh, the flame slinger We haven't been doing our barbecuing as much recently. Short sword, short sword, nothing really that interesting. I've been leaning on our dragon spell, so maybe we'd go for the uh, the old time's sake. What are you looking at, nerd? <laughs> nice spacing, loser. <laughs> Not me. He's simply better than me. Oh, 
Oh. Okay, oh, what, that's what I get, actually. <laughs> that's what I get. All right, now it's personal, bro. Bro. Crazy, right? Why you don't want to fight my wolf? I'm simply better than him. Thank you, wolves. Wow. The cleanup crew is here. Hello? What do we have? What do we have here? Ooh, a new shield. That's kind of nice. That is interesting. Um, Alright, we can probably drop that piece of garbage and get this one. Alright. And then we gotta head off to Kaled. We head east. Who are they fighting? There's still more people here? Dude, these guys. They just show up out of nowhere. Locking on would help for sure. Foot soldier gauntlets? Are those better than what I have right now? No. Wait, what's that over there? Exalted flesh. Yummy, yummy, yummy. I love a little snack. Okay. I'm out here on my Michael Vick era. I can't believe I just died to the dog. I was trying to make jokes. I'm not a multitasker. <laughs> now everyone's back. Should I clear this out again? Oh no, we just, we cheese it, we just run fast. Oh my god, loud siren. Okay. Pop. Oh my god. Double jumping on a horse, like whoever invented that, give them a raise. It's actually so clutch. Karma said zap. <laughs> Hello? Oh, Alexander! Can you hear me? Help me. I'm stuck. You're a real one, Hello? bro. Oh, my stars. I'm so happy to see you. Alexander! I am Alexander. Pot friend. Also known as the Iron Fist. And as you can see, I'm stuck here. Uh -huh. Please, can you help me out of this? Easy peasy. My thanks. A thousand thanks. Anything for you, Alex. Just give me a good smack from the rear with something nice and big. <laughs> and I'll pop clean out, I'm sure. <laughs> Don't dally. Did Alex just tell me to hit it from the back? I'm very well give it your all I say all right Ouch. you good bro don't stop now friend I'm gonna just keep clobbering away at the old behind he's a freak to rest I'll be just fine I'm very well trained give it your all I say 
Are you okay, man? Don't stop now. Okay, okay, I'll clobber away on your old behind. Oh, Pog. Let's go. Well played, good lady. Well played. Though that mighty wallop of yours. You gotta stop talking, Alex, dude. <laughs> well, I'm out now, and that's what I we love a gay friend. I, thank you. And as a token of my appreciation, oh. I'd like you to have this. Exalted flesh, let's go. Did he do we have any talismans? No. Okay. Once again, the pleasure is mine. I am the warrior jar known as Alexander. Wow. Iron fist Alexander. In fact. I see that. I journey to the east, where I intend to further my education in the ways of war. And beyond these lands lie the scarlet, rot blighted Kalid wilds. And upon their southern edge is Redmain Castle, in which a festival of combat is being held. Okay. I'd heard whispers of such festivities before. Doesn't the notion set your breast a flutter? Sort of. <laughs> I'm heading to Redmain. I've heard there's. Yep, yep, yep. You're heading. I'm heading you're heading Redmain, eastward. I've... Okay, lovely. I'll see you at Redmain Castle. Um, I feel like there is a grace nearby. Are we gonna get pumpkin head? Here's a grace. We couldn't pull him out. Well, no, that is Alex. He just liked that, you know? Damn, this spell's not bad, huh? I always thought it was so dog. But we literally just roast him up. Like... Okay. Wow. I can't believe that. I've never really given the Dragon Communion thing a fair shot. I, I feel like if we're in a real boss fight where he's not just standing there, that spell's so bad. But that one, it just did work. <laughs> we actually cooked him up. Smithing stone one. Two of them. Oh my god, that's clutch. I think we're pretty close to another upgrade here. Limgrave. Oh, this is not where we want to be, is it? No, wait, 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 this is the right way. We can get to Kaelid from here. Power spike. Whoop. Um... Hello? Oh. Nice shot. There's no mistake. Is there? Death has left its mark once again. Oh, is this uh, Dialos's buddy? See, that's not great. The fact that it just, like, falls. Like, it fails if we don't get it right. Alright, I have to double kill you, right? Okay, we're rude. Bro, if I hit you when I... If you... Uh, I hit him when he's doing his spell... It goes off just fine. He hits me when I'm doing mine, and then the whole dragon disappears. Rude. Get him out of here, man. I'm sorry. I cannot give you your proper rights. But at least you did not join those who live in death. Your soul will return to the earth tree in time. Honeyed rays of gold. Sag. Deliver 
this spirit. Pour one out. Ah, a tarnished Arya, yep. known as D. I hunt down those who live in death. And, and you take their death route. My warning. Oh, okay. The village here has been touched by death. Okay. And worse yet. It is home to be a mariner. a mariner. Okay. If you value your life, okay. then go no further. Honeyed rays of gold. That sounds delicious. It's like a cereal brand. Okay. The village here turned back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think I'm afraid of a tibia mariner? Like, who do you think I am? I'm about to be Elden Lord. And then I die to the tibia mariner. <laughs> Oh, Grace, let's go. Very cool of you. Do I have a level cooking? I think I'm still like a thousand away. Ish. Right, yeah. Sh sh just shy of a thousand. Alright, let's cook up this Mariner. Hey, dude. I think we want the dogs, right? As much as I love the jellies. Alright, well that did not work out very well. Where'd he go? Seems like he's the one that's afraid of me. Double kill. Could be an anagram, but I'm I was wrong. Honey rays of gold. I, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Your Sherlock Holmes brain is firing. <laughs> the lore. There has to be lore. It means something. What do the numbers mean, Mason? Where is this dude? Hello, Tibia Mariner. I see your boss bar, so you must be. Oh, there he is. I'm coming for you. Oh, that was the wrong... Are you kidding me? What a coward. Can we please? Where, where is... Open. Oh my god. More ads. Please, one time. Oh, okay. Sick. Oh my god. Okay. And then again. Hook him up. This is actually such a good use case for this because it does AoE on the ground. So it just double kills him. Alright, well, he's gone again. So annoying, dude. Really? Did we get the double kill? Please. Please. How many corpses are out here? This guy's just raising the dead, raising the dead all day. Please, don't leave this time. I hate that you can't lock on to the corpses either. I'm just like out here giving it my best shot. Crazy, dude. T 
Tibia Mariner, Tibia Mariner and Trina a bit. Wow, you're really cooking up something over here. He's a linguistics guy. Oh my god, dude. I need more Stam, dude. I just keep running out of Stamina. Alright. And he's gone. Oh, kill the, kill the thing! <laughs> okay, dude. I get it. I Oh my god. We run back. We run back. Elden Ring, hard game. We still have one wolf. It's crazy. And then everyone comes in. Get the goon squad. Okay, we had a heal. I do not want to die. I one wolfie. Sick. Play it safe. Play it safe. We're okay. Those two are on spot. I'm starting to think I'm overanalyzing the 20 I have in my notes. <laughs> I hear you. Well, you have to an anal you have to overanalyze 20 to find the two good ones. You know what I mean? Oh my god. This crossbow guy is actually worrying to me. I feel like the ranged attacks could like come out of nowhere and just bonk me. Can we just greed it? Greed? Greed never hurt anyone? Oh, let's go. One time. Give me my money, dude. First try. Not close. Best summon in the game? <laughs> no, not best summon in the game. But I love this skeletal militiaman ashes. The fact that they just come back is so clutch. Um. Ooh. Mushroom, Pog. Are we in ruins? Summon Water Village. It's not ruins. So that means there's no secret hidey hole here. 5k. That means... Are we... No, wait. let's just go to the next grace, huh? Well, we do have a Stone Sword Key. Well, let's make note of it, huh? I forget what it is over here. We just want to get to Kaled. There she is. That rotten wretch of a place. Actually, maybe I am cooking. <laughs> the water. I encourage you. You know what I mean? Oh, Berserk reference. Is this... Uh, is there a sacred tear in here? I'm going to get invaded, aren't I? Let me just let me just do this real quick. Take a quick nap. All right, as long as I got the grace, it's fine. Whoa! Give me no time to think. Okay. Trina's li lilies are water lilies. Big brain, big brain. <laughs> it's kind of true. Mm. Tactical reset. Alright, where is she? Rematch, rematch. That wasn't fair, dude. My controller wasn't plugged in.
Come on now. Get her out here. What are you afraid? What are you, chicken? Oh, Missionaries Cookbook 3. Nomadic War Warriors Cookbook 14. How many cookbooks are there, dude? 14? Did I not go enough out here to trigger her? Where's the invasion? Hello? Anyone home? Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, I'm against a rock. Whoa, that was epic, dude. I'll actually give her that one, dude. She jumped me. Okay, this is the one. It's not hard. It's not a hard fight, right? Right? It's not a hard fight. Easy fight. Skip, 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 skip. I probably should have taken my level. <laughs> Didn't I have like a non negligible amount of runes on me? Runes, please. At least she gives me time to collect before um, she comes back. Come on. Wow, the poise on her. Pink poke. Ha 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 I win, you lose. Let's not count the first two times. I finally got a uh, talisman. Holy attack. Lowers damage negation. I don't actually think I want that. All right, let's reset, and then we need to go find some Clean Rot Knights, dude. I need that Clean Rot Knight set, and the, uh, what's it called? The Spear. I will take some Endurance. Oh, we had two levels, huh? I'll take two Endurance, why not? Um, the Stamina really does help. It's one of those things that's not, like, sexy to clean up. <laughs> you know what I mean? To... Figure out what your your stamina is going to be. So like, oh, more damage. But it actually makes your life so much easier. Are you trying to fight them? Yeah, we have to go kill some clean rot knights. And then um, there's a drop chance. It's an adult purchase, <laughs> exactly. Are the dogs still following me? No. Um, I wonder if we can farm this um, thing over here with our dragon flame. This could be interesting. The AoE on the dragon flame is actually such good utility. Or dragon fire, I should say. Oh. Okay, rude. You're actually cringe, bro. Like, what? what is that? Hello? How much moolah? It's actually so bad. It's not a good farm. Oh, 
All right, well, at least we cleared it. And then I want to just go grab the map real quick. I don't want to fight any of these dogs. I really don't. <laughs> I swear to God, even if you're like leveled high, the dogs are just so annoying based on their moveset. What is going on over there? Grace. Have you guys met my friend Grace? She's a real sweetheart. Pretty satisfying clear. I agree. It was nice. Get value out of the... The dragon communion spells. Or incantations, I should say. Alright, dickhead, dude. He keeps following me. Oh, that's a cliff. Ooh, graveyard? Give me the runes, give me the runes. Okay. Uh, oh my god. Dude. <laughs> Holy Christ. Give me the money, dude. Uh, oh my god. Freaking dogs man why can't my dogs be that big haha uh -huh. I bet you can't get over the cliff nerd catch me if you can am I going the right way grails dragon barrow I mean, we could just pull up on like 75,000 runes if we kill Grail and a dragon heart. Or isn't it five dragon hearts? Ugh. I mean, it's tempting. It really is tempting. But I think we'll hold off for now. I think it's something extra, yeah. Oh, see a little dead guy. We could fight Ezekiel, or whatever his name is. Alright, we gotta go south. South. Um, yeah, I think you get more than you bargained for. Um, with the Grail. I'm pretty sure it gives you like five, like three or five dragon hearts, if I recall correctly, and a shit ton of runes for literally nothing. Is this more than you bargained for? Yeah. Huh. Everjail? Who's in this Everjail? Is this Vike? No, this can't. This is not Vike. Right? Vikes and mountaintops. Dude, where is my, uh... Where's my map? You think we can make this jump here? At some point, we have to be able to, right? Here, this looks like a crossing point. Easy MLB. That was close, though. I actually almost fell, because I thought I could do it in one jump. <laughs> All right. Clean Rot Knights inbound. Excuse me, Mr. Puppy. Oh, shortcut. Speedrun skip. <laughs> Do you see me bail? Because I thought I was going to die. Is this more than you bargained for? Yeah. Oh, hey, buddy. Oh, is this a merchant? Do you sell anything good? Oh, welcome, dear customer. 
Yes, right this way. Hi, Welcome, buddy. Valued customer. See, this is more like it. Come, trade in our wandering emporium. It's a nice guy. Please, buy something. I'm hungry. <laughs> Please. I could just give you some food. So long. Okay. Uh, I mean, this stuff's all bad. <laughs> I don't want any of it. Uh, I don't. I'll, I'm not blowing 2500 on a preserving bolus. Just because you said you're hungry, man. Like, I'll just give you food. What if I sell you, uh, here, do you want a mushroom? You want a mushroom? There you go. That'll keep you busy for a while. The panic inhale. See ya. Can we jump on that and not take fall damage? Lit. Okay, they should be around here somewhere. Swamp of Aeonia. Huh. Any clean rot knights in the building? Any clean rot knights? Okay, we're so close to getting our first piece of armor. Um, can I just get the grace, man? I don't want any of this smoke. Alright, let's go, let's go. Any clean rot knights? Any clean rot knight enjoyers? Dude. Could you guys chill? Like, what is up with this? Out here at Old Faithful. I think it's over here, right? Do I have to kill this guy? Uh, no. Come on. I feel like if I go fight this boss, I'm going to get cooked like a little barbecue fried chicken. You're telling me there are no just wandering about clean rot nights. Oh, is this right where I was, man? Did I go through that whole area for no reason? That's actually so funny. <laughs> oh, these dickheads. No way they would kill me right now. Okay. What? Why? What is this? Stop beyond the shack at the southern gate. Okay, I'm not letting you kill me like that. I'm really just not going to let you do it. I've never ran here after Margaret, though. Yeah, well. We're going crazy. Um. Alright, maybe we, um. Maybe we go up and around and get the map. I do not want to deal with Celia Town. I'm sorry. See you later. Enjoy. I, I didn't mean to intrude. Enjoy your stay. Oh, you dick. Okay, dude. I was very polite. I didn't even mean to intrude. Alright, we just keep running. Oh, this is the guy. We can do the, the Melisent quest line. I don't want to kill his dog, man. That's like a collared dog. If you kill his dog, you're a jerk. Map should be right around here, no? Okay. I'm just, I just, uh, is this too much to ask for, a map? I got birds and dogs and puppets chasing me. Oh, I see it, let's go. Map in the distance. And then we have uh, Ezekiel. <laughs> What's his name? Ex Eczema? The dragon, you know what I'm talking about? You got anything good? Cracked pot. That's cool. 
Champion Headband. Great Helm. We could pick up the Great Helm just because we haven't... Um, we're not wearing anything else. I do like my red hair, though. I kind of made a mistake. I feel like we should just let the red hair fly. If we're cosplaying. Like, we're just, like, budget Mesmer the Impaler. <laughs> you know what I mean? We have a spear. I have Catch Flame. Ha! <laughs> I'm the guy from the DLC. E Eki... Ekzeeks. Eggseeks. I'm going with Eggseeks on that one. It's better than Eczema. Okay, so the spelling can't be that far off. Alright. Let me just tab out for one second here. I want to see where the exact location of the Clean Rot Knights is. Okay, so they should be... Like right... It should be like right. Ah! I almost spilled my water. Jesus Christ, scared me. Right here ish. Alright, cool. Timu tarnished. <gasps> We're fine. We're fine. <laughs> Timu Tarnish is actually so funny, dude. That's a good one. <laughs> uh, what are you? Are you anything fun for me? Cooked. Cooked and booked. Alright, we definitely stay on the, to the horse. We stay on Torrent. Torrent cannot get poisoned. Thank the lord. Alright, any clean rot knights? No, 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 no. We don't like Scarlet Rot. Do they only show up after something happens, or... Are you a clean rot knight? You don't seem like a clean rot knight to me. You look pretty clean rot, but you don't look very knightly. And this certainly is not the armor set. Or the weapon that I'm looking for. Alright, clean rot knights. Keep your eyes peeled, everyone, okay? If you see a clean rot knight, say something. Street of Sage's Ruin. Okay, loser. Like, actually, so ridiculous that you would do that. I'm just out here trying to do my best, and you're preying on my downfall. Okay. Okay, you know what? You win. You win that one. Bro, I can't see. <laughs> I forgot. You did specifically say, I need a blindfold. I have blurry vision. <laughs> okay. But for real, dude, where are these clean rot knights? They should be like right here. I don't see any of them. Any clean rot enjoyers? Hello? Oh, there he is! Let's go! Now that is more like it. Invaded by Millicent? I thought you were cool, Millicent. Okay, dude. Like, I was actually winning that fight, and then you 2v1 me? Millicent, it's me! Holy shit, it's me, Pog! <laughs> I'm actually doing Millicent cosplay. I can't believe that. At least we found the uh, clean rot. Ridiculous, actually. So ridiculous. Why did Millicent invade me, dude? I'm just trying to farm armor. I thought Millicent would be like a fan of cosplay, if anything. I don't want to kill Millicent. 
is the thing. I just want the clean rot knights. Get off, no scarlet rot today. Bro, Millicent, you gotta chill. You gotta chill. Okay, 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 okay. Okay! I warned you! Okay. <laughs> What a f waterfowl, bitch. <laughs> waterfowl. I can wiki run once. I can wiki run one second. I'm not understanding, but it sounds helpful, whatever you're suggesting. Did I get my, my runes? Ah! Oh no, Commander O'Neill. Not like this. It, 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 in the, I'm not interested, Mr. Commander. Oh, I see a clean rot. Am I getting invaded by Millicent again? Oh, you little stinker. Where are my runes? I just want my runes, dude. Okay. Okay. I think I'm, uh... <laughs> I think I'm getting cooked deep fried. Deep fat fried. <laughs> we gotta get this. We gotta get this. That's a non-negotiable. Um, is there another area with clean rot knights? Okay, yeah, there should be many around here. Hey, Lake Tree. Yeah, I think I want to try and go... The oh, I mean, we're finding them here. We're finding the knights. The only problem is... Um, oh, God, no, not like this. The only problem is that we're getting invaded by Millicent, and I don't want to get invaded by Millicent. Oh, God, more dragonflies. Hey, Lake Tree. Hey, Lake Tree. They rise up from the ground. So, oh, see, there's one right over there. But I think that's the one that's going to smoke me, dude. Like, Millicent's about to pop out of nowhere. See, clean run night. And do I get off my horse? I'm chilling. Let's go. Alright, we can take one clean run. Scarlet Rot ain't nothing but a thing. Okay, psych. Scarlet Rot's really bad. But that could be me, man. I'm trying to get that to be me. What's the easiest way to get to the south of Neil O'Neill? Mr. Neil? This looks pretty chill. Um Okay, yeah, there are a bunch here, it looks like. Somber four? Aeonian butterfly? This looks like a clean rot knight. Are you a clean rot knight? Okay, there he is. I would love to not get uh, Scarlet Rot, if possible. Okay, crazy. Not like this, not like this. 
How am I Scarlet Rot? Wow! It is a six spear, right? All right. We're supposed to end stream in 14 minutes, but I am not going to end stream until I can get at least one Clean Rot Knight. We got to kill this Clean Rot Knight. I'm just out here getting farmed. I'm supposed to be the one farming. <laughs> it's a pride thing at this point. <laughs> Alright, is there a stable area I can stand? Oh my god, you dickheads, dude. Get away from me. I can't believe it. Leave me alone. Is that a clean rot? It looks pretty clean rot. Oh no, that's a marionette. I think there's one right over here, if I recall correctly. There we go. Okay, now, now you, everyone wants to show up all at once. Holy moly. I'm cooked. I was close. If I could just kill one of them, man. And then the Scarlet Rot. I should have paid for the freaking bolus. Yeah, oh. We're close. We're close. I wish I could just go to this one, but Millicent's going to invade me. Right? I mean, let's give it a shot. Now, I don't know if this is the right clean rot knight. Because it doesn't have the spear. It has the gear set, but it doesn't have the spear. This is like a scythe or some shit. Okay, cool. Easy, one time. Please, any drops. Any drops would be great. No drops. We got one clean raw night, though. So that is something. A second clean rot knight? No, couldn't be. Okay, chill. I'm cooked. Even if I win, yeah, I was gonna die to the rot. That's the one I need. Oh, wait, no, no. Neither of these. That's the one I need. I need the one with the spear, not the hook. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? You hear me? You're picking up what I'm putting down. I guess either will be fine until I get the full gear set. But the spear one would be preferable. Okay. 
You're free. Like, this one's actually free. And then I die. Oh, that looks like a drop. Drop? Let's go, dude. <laughs> Let's go. The RNG. Okay, sick, sick. We got one piece of the gear set. Clean Rot Helm. Very cool. We're getting there. We're getting there. So worth, right? It actually looks so sick, too. I didn't realize the helm had, like, the whole cape attached to it. Here, get me out of this hellhole, dude. Yeah, dude, luck. Sick. I, yeah, I didn't realize that the cape had all this. Or I didn't. I didn't realize that the helmet had all this cape attached to it. You know what I mean? We're kind of starting to look like Mesmer. The cosplay is coming together. I have a spear. I have a helmet. I have red hair. Okay. Okay. Right? Let's pull up a picture. Let's do a side by side. Mesmer the Impaler. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Him? Me? Wait, let me do my thing. <laughs> I have fire. I have fire, right? <laughs> like he's actually just like me from the future okay i think that's all we got cooking today i think that is all we got cooking today we will be back here tomorrow same time system yeah i return to desktop we will be, be back here tomorrow, same time, 4 p.m. Eastern. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Hudson, I appreciate you being here for the uh, for the stream. You've been a real trooper. Made it a lot better for me. <laughs> uh, it's a lot easier to sit here and talk to someone than it is here to sit here and talk to no one. <laughs> so... Yeah, that's about the size of it. I'll be back. Um, if you want to check out here, I'll drop my links again, just for the sake. It was fun. I had a great time seeing new ideas. Thank you. Thank you. I'm trying pretty hard to be at least someone, somewhat original. YouTube, VODs, Discord. There you go. Um, so yeah, that's about the size of it. And uh, GG, GG. Thank you for being here again. I'm going to end stream. Goodbye. Hopefully I'll see you tomorrow or I'll see you in the Discord or something. I'll sure, I'm sure I'll see you around sometime. It doesn't show up for me. I'm gonna DM you on Twitch. Copy link. There you go.
that's the Discord invite. And then if you need any other links, I can just give them to you when you're in the Discord. So I'll see you around. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. This is for real this time. See you, bye.